Hi there, my name is Dan and I'm an Adobe Certified Instructor and an Adobe Certified Expert in Adobe Illustrator. Now together, me and you are gonna go through this course and make beautiful artwork together using Illustrator. During this course, you won't just learn how to use the tools, we'll work through real world practical projects together. Now this course is aimed at people completely new to Illustrator and maybe to design in general. We're gonna start absolutely right at the beginning and work our way through step by step. We'll start with the techniques that you'll need to create just about anything in Illustrator. We'll customize shapes, use the wonderful Shape Builder tool and the simple to use Curvature tool. We'll explore lines and brushes, plus your soon to be favorite width tool. You'll master how to use and manipulate type. I'll show you all the sneaky secrets that Illustrator has to discover and use beautiful colors like a seasoned designer. You'll learn how to push, pull, cut, and repeat just like this. There's even a section in here where we'll hone our skills by practicing redrawing these real world brands. We won't forget the essentials like proper saving and exporting, plus so, so much more. So if you've never opened up Illustrator before, or you've opened it and you struggled a little bit, follow me, I'll show you how to make beautiful artwork together in Illustrator. All right, time to get started. Uh, there's a couple of things you need to do first. One is download the exercise files. There'll be a link on the page to download those so you can play along. There's another link there saying the completed files. You don't need these, but they're handy. What I do at the end of every video, I kind of save where I'm up to. Okay, so that maybe yours is not quite working or you just want to see how I made mine. You can download that Illustrator file just to check against yours. Uh, there's uh, one last thing is, is a cheat sheet. Right at the end of this course, there is a, a video version of that cheat sheet. Okay, you can watch that when, whenever you're ready for cheats and shortcuts and stuff. And um, the other thing is, is there is a PDF version of that cheat sheet. Okay, you can download it for free from bringyourownlaptop.com. There's a resources tab at the top. Just click on that and you'll see Illustrator plus a load of other ones. But um, yeah, it's time to start learning Illustrator. Let's go. Hi there, in this video, we're going to look at getting started with Illustrator, basically some navigation of the interface and just getting Illustrator set up so that we can all work together and you can follow along with me. First thing we do is let's open up one of our exercise files. Let's go up to file and let's go to open. And in our exercise files, there is one called getting started. Let's click open. Okay, so the first thing we'll do to get everybody kind of lined up together is resetting our workspace. Now in the top right here, you can see it says essentials are mine. Yours might say something different from this drop down. What I'd like you to do is pick essentials. And then once it's got a little tick next to it, so click on it then drop it down again and say reset essentials and that'll just kind of reset it and make it look like mine. The other thing that might look a little different between yours and mine is this uh, toolbar on the left here. And um, because my laptop's big enough, it allows me to see all of the tools in one big long line. Yours might be smaller. You might be using a 13 inch, uh, say MacBook Pro or something. Okay, it will show them as a double like this. See this little uh, double arrow here, this little chevron. Okay, you can decide whether you want to work this way or this way. I'm gonna work this way because that's my default, but you might be seeing it just a little bit differently. Next thing to do is to do with your preferences for units and increments. It's a bit strange in Illustrator, so it's worth mentioning here at the beginning. Um, I've got a document open. I have nothing selected by using the black arrow and just clicking in the background, nothing selected. You can see the units in this case are set to centimeters. I can change them here for this document to say inches. Okay, and that's how to change it for this document. Now, if you've come from other Adobe products, you'll know that you can go into preferences and change your units and increments. It doesn't work that way in Illustrator. What happens is you create the uh, units and increments as you create a new document, or like we did here, you change it with nothing selected. So say I wanna make a new document and I wanna make sure it's inches. So I go to print and I decide I want a letter and you'll notice that it's defaulted to points and it always does that. Okay, there is a bit of a hack to go through and change it, but we just live with points because that's what Adobe said. Even with A4, okay, so metric sizings, it still defaults to points. So what you need to do is pick letter and then go in here and say, I want it to be inches. That will make sure the default sizing for that uh, document is in inches. I'm gonna click on create. 
Now you might be doing kind of more web design, okay, so that units could be switched from inches, millimeters to maybe something like pixels. Often I work that way, especially when I'm doing maybe UI design in Illustrator, okay, but we're going to work in inches for most of this course. Now if you need to change the page size afterwards, a really easy way to do it is down here there's a tool, okay, it's called the Artboard tool. If I click on it, okay, it kind of selects the Artboard and I can drag it around, which is kind of strange. Okay, you can just make up a size, but often with it selected over here, you can see I can give it a page size by changing the height and the width. You can see here also, I can change it to landscape. Now, one thing is if you're following along with say something like CS6, so quite an older version of Illustrator, 95% of this course will work just fine. The big change for you is you won't have this properties panel, you'll have something slightly different. Under essentials, you'll have essentials classic, Okay, and you'll have most of these options. Can you see there's Artboard 1, Artboard 1, they're up the top there. But in the later version, okay, the one that we're using now, is they just tuck them into this properties panel. So you can play along just fine with CS6 or earlier versions, but you just have to know that when I'm using the properties panel, you're actually using this kind of control app bar along the top. Now a couple more things just to get us used to Illustrator before we start making things is I've gone back to uh, getting started. You'll notice that there's tabs along the top. Okay, so this is how to have more than one document open and travel between the two. So I'm going to go to getting started. I'm going to grab my black arrow. Now your black arrow is your default. This is the one to use all of the time. Okay, it's your uh, fallback tool. Because what it does is it just moves things around. Which if I click on this guy, I can move him around. It physically moves stuff. That's his job, the selection tool. Now the selection tool moves the thing in its entirety. Okay, there's another tool in here called the white arrow, okay, or the direct selection tool. And what this does is it allows you to pick little parts of that object. Whereas the black arrow moved the whole thing, which is if I click on one of these little dots here, okay, you can see it's blue versus all the rest of them that are white. I can move just one part of this little fox here. Okay, so we're gonna be using both of these tools, mainly the black arrow, but the white arrow will be something that we use as well. A couple more things that uh, we'll need to work with is edit. You've got undo and redo. Okay, so if things go wrong, you can go backwards. You can use the shortcut if you feel like it. Okay, it has unlimited undo, so you can go back loads. The next thing is zooming in and out. There's a tool down the bottom here. Okay, the zoom tool, you can click on it and hold down the option key on a Mac to zoom out or an alt key on a PC. You can see the icon changes from a plus, but if I hold down the option key on a Mac, it changes into a minus and you just click once. Now, I never use that and you'll find that we're not gonna do too many shortcuts in this intro class, but um, a really good shortcut for in and out is holding down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC and just tapping the plus key, okay? And the minus to zoom out. It's a really quick and easy way to zoom around. Another really useful tool is, I'm gonna go back to my black arrow, is when I'm moving around, you can drag these little sliders here Okay, and that's fine, but you'll find that just holding down the space bar, you'll see my cursor changes from the black arrow to the hand, click hold, drag around. Okay, so space bar and just click hold your mouse button. It's a really easy way to move around. Now another thing to note in Illustrator is that we've got something called an artboard. Now artboard is just like another page. Okay, they call them uh, artboards in Illustrator. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Now I'm gonna go back to my artboard tool, my pages tool. I am going to click once over here and drag out and I've got a second page okay so with it selected I can click I'll drag it across a little bit give it some room and then over here I can switch it to a4 I'm gonna zoom out okay so you can have more than one page I've got first page which is kind of a postcard size and then I've got this a4 page so just think of them as pages in a document you can export them as pages in a PDF okay or you just might have multiple concepts to work in between the two okay so you can have more than one artboard one last thing to quickly discuss before we get into making stuff is that grouping in isolation mode. Now I show you this now because everyone gets lost. So I've got this fox here, and at the moment it's actually just separate shapes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it all. So I'm gonna hold down my shift key. So my black arrow, shift key, click on these guys. So with them all selected, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to object, I'm gonna group them so that they're kinda of like one little unit that I can move around. I've missed a little white bit, but that's okay. But he's grouped. Now what ends up happening is when you're new to Illustrator is, especially if you love to double click, okay? I've got my black arrow, if I double click him, weird stuff happens, right? This kinda of grays out and I can't select on anymore and I can work on these guys individually. What's happened is you've entered something called isolation mode. And the way I know is that it's grayed out in the background. There's this kind of blue line along the top and you can see here I'm inside of this group. Layer one is home base, okay? So I can just click on that to come back out. So that's where people often get lost. Okay, so they're working fine, working fine, working fine. Double click, 
and then they get lost in here and they can't work on stuff and things go a bit weird so just if that ever happens just click on layer one okay all this big arrow here it's up to you just to come back to home base all right, enough boring navigation, uh, getting set up stuff. Let's start making stuff in the next video. I'll see you over there. Hello, hey, uh, I just wanted to quickly ask you how the video's going. Are you enjoying it? If you are even a little bit, maybe think about clicking the like button. Helps me out. Also subscribing to the channel if you wanna see more. And there's plenty more to come in this video, but I also want to remind you that this particular video is just a small part of a larger course for Illustrator Essentials. And there's loads more that we do in that full course if you're interested. I also have an Illustrator Advanced course as well. What you're seeing in front of you now are the things that we go on to make together in those courses. So uh, check out the links in the description if you are enjoying this and want to go further with Adobe Illustrator. If you did decide to go on to those courses, um, know that I also have courses for Photoshop Essentials and Advanced, InDesign, Adobe XD, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Dreamweaver, loads of great content. All right, a little sales pitch over. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Let's go. Hi there, welcome to this video. We are going to draw this uh, lovely little fox using just basic shapes, okay, lines and rectangles and stars, just really simple stuff. Okay, we're gonna start with a template to draw over the top and end up with this. All right, let's go and look at that now. Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to draw from this drawing that I've made, okay, just to make it simple and so we can all kind of follow along. Okay, so what I'd like to do is in Illustrator is we're gonna go to File, New. Okay, and pick a document size. I'm going to start with print. I'm going to use US letter. I'm going to use landscape. Okay, and I'm not going to change anything else. I'm just going to click create. I'm going to save it. Okay, so I'm going to get a file save. And what we'll do for this class is I'll put everything on my desktop. You do the same. I'm going to make a new folder on my desktop. I'm going to call this one Illustrator class files. Okay, and that's where we're going to stick everything from this class. Let's call this one Sleeping Fox. And let's click Save. Let's leave everything as the default and click OK. All right, so we're drawing from a drawing. I've drawn it in my notebook, right? And I want to kind of just redraw it in Illustrator. So a nice trick to do that is I've done a scan of it. Okay, or you can take a photo of it. And I'm going to go to File and I'm going to go to Place. Now, Place is uh, Import, okay, for Illustrator. Illustrator likes to call it Place. Click on that. I want you to find your exercise files and there's one in there called sleepingfox.jpg. Now before you click place, click on this one that says template. What it does for us, let's have a look, let's click place. What it does for us is it brings it in, okay, and I'm going to click in the background here and it puts it on a layer, okay, and locks it so we can draw over the top of it easily. Okay, where I click on my layers panel here, you can see it created a template layer and then a layer that I can draw on. You don't have to do this, okay, it just makes it a little easy when we're redrawing. For some reason, it likes to bring it in and kind of has it a little bit over here to the left. So I'm going to unlock it. Can you see that's the locking icon? I'm going to click on it, drag it across to a little bit more in the middle, somewhere like that, and then lock it again. And to continue drawing, I'm going to make sure I'm on layer one. Let's jump back to properties. Now we'll start with this body here. We're going to grab the rectangle tool. Here he is here. And I'm going to click, hold, and drag out kind of a rough rectangle. If you don't get it quite right, jump back to the black arrow and use any of these white boxes here just to kind of resize it and get it kind of close to that size there. Uh, it's a bit of a guess. Don't worry too much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a fill color and a stroke color. Now, yours might be different. Yours might have a black line around the outside and a white fill. Let's look at changing those. So over here in my appearance panel, there's one called fill and one called stroke. Okay, so I'm gonna click on fill and I'm gonna pick a fox kind of color. Now we're gonna use the swatches here. So you've got two options here, kind of the rainbow colors and the swatches. Let's just pick, just for this class, let's keep it simple and just pick something in here. You can have a green fox, that's okay. I'm just gonna have an orange fox. And in terms of the stroke, okay, the stroke is the line around the outside. Yours might already be black. And you might see, I'll click off over here, you can see there's a black line. If I select on this and click on stroke color, now I want to use this little red line here. This little red line indicates no stroke, that little red crossed out, nothing there. So that's what I want. If nothing is changing, okay, what you need to do with your black arrow is just make sure this box is selected, then make your changes. 
Okay, so that's a rectangle, exciting, and that says fill color. Let's get into something a little bit more exciting. See these little dots in the corner here? These are your corner options. Watch this, I can click and drag these corners, okay, the little uh, spots there, and you can notice that all of the corners come and change. Okay, so it's kind of what I want. I'm gonna go to Edit Undo. Okay, I'm gonna use my shortcut for the rest of this course, so it's Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC. So I'm gonna undo a couple of times until it's back. Now what I'd like to do is, you can see underneath here the drawing, I've just got a corner there and a corner there. So what I'd like to do is use my white arrow. Remember the black arrow is great for doing kind of like big things, moving the whole object. The white arrow is good for doing little bits within that object. And what I'm gonna do is in this top right hand corner, I'm gonna click it once. You'll notice that this guy is blue and these guys are white, indicating that this one is selected. And you can see here just one little target appears. Okay, I can click on this guy now and go something like that. Same with the bottom left, click on that one, drag it up. Don't worry too much about being perfect. But if you are, if you really do want it to be perfect, what you can do is I'm gonna undo a couple of times is you can have these guys selected at the same time. So click this guy once, hold shift, click this guy once, and you've got two dots. And when you drag one, they both update. Cool, so that's my little thing for his body. Let's look at doing the head now. So I'm gonna go back to my black arrow. Remember that's the default kind of tool to go to. Click off in the background, got nothing selected. And the next tool I want is the polygon tool. Okay, because I want a triangle for his head and that's considered a polygon in here. So I'm gonna find the rectangle tool, click, hold, hold, hold with your mouse key. Okay, hold it down and eventually these pop out. And I'm looking for this one called polygon. Click on that. Now, if I just do nothing, it'll drag out whatever I last drew. Yours is probably gonna draw an actual pentagon or a hexagon. It's gonna draw something. Okay, so I'm gonna undo to get rid of that. If you wanna adjust how many sides this uh, polygon has, all you need to do is just click once with your mouse. Click once and you get these polygon options. Okay, and yours is probably set to five and you're probably getting something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna undo again. Click once, pick three sides. Don't worry too much about the radius. We can change that afterwards. So I've got a triangle. So next thing I wanna do is do some rotation and scaling. And it's best to do that when we're back on our safety tool, the black arrow. I'm gonna click, hold and drag the center. Okay, so it's kind of mm, in a more usable place. Now to scale and rotate. Uh, let's look at rotating first. So black arrow, I have this guy selected just once. Now what you'll notice is when I'm in the corner, I get this little uh, stretching arrow, that's my scale. But if I come just a bit further out, I get this little double arrow. Okay, so this is kind of like no man's land here. Too far, doesn't work. Just in, okay, you'll get used to it. Okay, so if I click and hold here, I can drag it around, okay, clicking and holding. Now what I can also do is undo. I want it to be kind of like, I want to flip it in a, like, is it 90 degrees? I think it's 90 degrees. Um, I want to, uh, while I'm dragging, watch this. If I hit down and hold down the uh, shift key on my keyboard, okay, watch this. Can you see it? drags in like nice big chunks. Okay, it's 45 degrees and then 90. That's what I want. Now in terms of scaling, same tool, okay, black arrow. And if I grab the corner here and just drag it, I can resize it any sort of shape I want, clicking, holding, and dragging. Now I would like to kind of constrain the proportion so it's like, like this perfect triangle because if I kind of scale it down here, it gets a bit long and thin. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the shift key Okay, like I did when I was rotating, if I hold shift while I'm scaling in any of the corners, you can see if I drag it down, it kind of wants to be the same height and width, it kind of locks that ratio. So I'm just gonna drag it kind of in there and drag it up a little bit, something like that. Okay, so getting close. Now the only trouble with what I've got here is I can't really see through it to some, uh, um, some of the other parts that I'm drawing. So what it might be nice now is just while I'm working, I'm gonna switch down the stroke and I'm gonna make it a black stroke and the fill, I'm gonna to change to none, okay? So fill with a little red line and the stroke with black. Now I can see through it. All right, like we did with the shape down here, we can play with the corner options. So I've got this selected with my black arrow. You'll notice that I can't click in the center anymore, okay? I could on this because it selects the whole thing, but in the middle of this, I can't. It doesn't, you've got to select the edge now because it has no fill. And like before, I can grab any, I can grab this like little target here and it does all the corners. That's not what I want, so I'm gonna undo. I'm gonna grab my white arrow and click on just this guy here and then I'm gonna drag him up to roughly the same size that I want. Awesome, triangles and rectangles. Let's do the nose now. So I'm gonna grab my polygon tool, click once, three sides, click okay, it's way too big. Grab my black arrow, holding shift, I'm gonna scale it down and then just in this no man's land, I'm gonna try and rotate it around. Now I'm gonna drag it down, I'm gonna get it roughly the right size there. 
Now what I can do when I'm dragging this thing around, often you just drag this little dot in the center, okay, that moves it around, and I kind of want to get it perfect in there. Okay, so there's a couple of things we need to do when we're working, is that you'll notice that by default, this thing kind of like, you see these like little marks that appears, uh, as you can see it says intersect and tries to line up with things all over here. So a couple of things we need to do is make sure our smart guides are on because they're really helpful. So go to view and come down to here, make sure smart guides are ticked on. Next thing to do is just to zoom in, okay? When you're working this far out on things this delicate, it's just really hard, it snaps to everything. So remember command plus or control plus on a PC, gets us in nice and close. And watch this, if I have my black arrow, just click off in the background. And so, so I don't have it selected, right? I got nothing selected. And if I click and you can see I can move my little cursor around, it says anchor. An anchor is considered like the, um, a corner point. Okay, so if I click on and drag this anchor, Okay, and I drag it close to here, you'll see eventually it'll snap in there, okay, and it just kind of like wants to line up and intersect. So you can find that's a nice easy way. You just gotta be zoomed in a little closer, and then kind of just drag at the corner and try and line it up where you want it to go. And if smart guides are on, it's, it's really good at kind of snapping in there. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna have this a fill of black, and I wanna have no line around the outside, no red line. Okay, next tool we're gonna to use is I wanna put in these whiskers. So I'm gonna select on this guy, and even though I just put the color in, I'm gonna move it back to having no fill, and I'm gonna give it a stroke around the outside, okay, so I can see it. Now let's do the whiskers, okay, and we're just gonna use the line segment tool, just a nice simple tool. Click hold, drag, click hold, drag, click hold, drag. Okay, just so I've got three little lines. One thing you might find is if you try and draw something kind of like straight out of you can see I, if I draw something and then I draw another one, I want it to come out that little point there, it actually starts moving it. So if you do want to kind of get them to come out of the same point is once you've drawn one, grab the black arrow, click in the background, go back to the line tool, and then you'll be able to kind of like start again. Black arrow, click in the background, back to the line tool, start again. Okay, I've kind of kept mine separate down here just to avoid that. All right, next thing I wanna do is this little closed eye. Now we could, if we hold down the polygon tool, find the ellipse tool, and I could draw like an open eye, okay? But my guy is sleeping, so I'm gonna delete him. And underneath the line segment tool is an arc tool. Okay, so click on him. And what I'm gonna draw is just something, it's a bit random the way it draws, okay? I want it kind of to be this way, but let's just click it down and kind of get something arcy, okay? And then we'll rotate it. So I've got something like that, grab my black arrow, Remember, just hovering out here, I can drag it around, move it down, scale it up. Just kind of work with it until you find something that you like, okay? And in terms of the stroke, say, width, okay, it's a bit thin for me, I'm going to increase it up. Probably the same for all of these guys. They're all a bit thin for me at the moment. So I can do them individually, and just over here with it selected, this is the stroke width, okay, how thick the line is. You can see it can get really big. Okay, I'm gonna go to something like, I don't know, five points. Now, I don't wanna to have to do this individually, so I'm gonna click on this guy with my black arrow, hold shift, grab him, grab him. So I've got all three of them selected, and I'd like them all to be five. There you go. Cool, so now I can go through and add my colors again. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So this body here, it had no stroke, so I'm gonna go back to uh, the little crossed out red line, and the fill here, I'm gonna pick my color. It's going to be, I think it was this one. Okay, and the head, I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna have no stroke, and I'm gonna pick a fill color of that orange. That's the kind of basics to get started. Let's look at a couple of things. Let's look at this air here. So what I'd like to do is I'm gonna grab my polygon tool again, and because it remembers what I drew last time, I can just draw something out, okay, rather than clicking once and making sure it's got three sides. I know it does now. So I can click and drag out. Now while I'm dragging out, I can hold shift, Get it to go perfect that's kind of what i want okay so something like that and it just needs to be big enough because what i'm gonna do is with a black arrow grab the center i'm going to kind of turn it into this air so it probably needs to be a bit bigger okay just so it kind of sits back there a little bit so what i'd like to do for this one is i'd like to have a really thick stroke and uh, a fill of white so the fill i'm going to change to white and i'm going to have the stroke and I'm gonna pick maybe just the darker color of that, and I'm gonna increase it to match the font size, uh, the stroke size. I'm using five everywhere else for these guys, I might as well use five for the ear. I'm just gonna pop it there. Now this brings me to the next point of arranging, okay, because uh, basically the last thing you draw is on top, all I need to do is move it to the back. And there's a couple of ways, and with it selected with the black arrow, 
Okay, over here there's one called a range and I can go send to back, there it goes there. Or often what I do is I just right click it and there's a range send to back. Either way, it doesn't matter. Let's look at doing these stars, okay? So there is an actual tool for it called the star tool. Okay, grab on him, click once, decide how many uh, points you want. And by default, it's gonna give you a pretty nice looking star. You can change the radius, uh, the two radiuses, the inner, which is the outside part, and then the inner radius, radius two is this inside part. Okay, so I'm gonna click okay, it gives me a star, I can click and drag it out. So what I'd like you to do is I'm gonna undo and just kind of drag out a star, start from the center, there we go, roughly, roughly. Don't worry too much about it. You can have more stars, you can have less stars. Uh, yeah, something like that. Badly drawn star, little stars. Add more, go nuts. Okay, we're gonna add a bit more detail, this uh, tail, and we'll add kind of the grass down the bottom. Now, basically we've covered the, the tools that we're gonna be using, so you can skip ahead. There's a couple of little things that we'll do in here. So let's do this tail first. Okay, so I might grab my rectangle tool. Can't find him, there he is. Okay, draw something roughly close to it. You'll notice the smart guides here is locking to the bottom, super helpful. You can turn them off though, remember, under view smart guides if you're finding them troublesome. There's a shortcut, it's, it's really often to turn it on and off while you're building. Okay, so they've given it a really good shortcut. In this case on a Mac, it's Command U or Control U on a PC, okay. So first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna give it no fill so I can see through it. Okay, and I'm gonna grab my white arrow click on just this corner. Actually, I'm gonna click on that one, hold shift, grab that one, and let's draw something matching this. Okay, um, same thing again, I'm gonna draw a rectangle over this guy. Okay, I'm gonna grab my white arrow, click on this one, hold shift, grab this guy, grab that corner point, and we're doing some stuff. Okay, and what I want to do is I'm gonna pick a fill color. So the moment the stroke is orange, I'd like to have the stroke as none. Fill color is the orange. And I'm gonna have this fill color, so a stroke of none and a fill color of white. Exciting. Now he's lying down. I feel like now that I've drawn it, I want to grab this guy. So I selected both of them, clicked on this, hold shift, grab this guy, and I'm gonna rotate it around. Holding shift while you're rotating, remember, like the head, locks it into kind of 45. Does he look like he's sleeping there? Uh, you decide, Does it, can, can't tell. <laughs> yeah, he looks, no, he looks like he's sleeping there. All right, and next thing I'd like to do is, underneath here is some grass. So all I'm gonna do is, actually I'm just gonna move that out of the way for the moment. Grab the polygon tool, which is still set to triangle. Okay, draw something triangly, and then grab the black arrow, and just kind of shrink it in there. And I'm just gonna build this. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit copy and paste it. So with it selected, I'm going to edit, copy, edit, paste. Okay, and I'm just gonna use my shortcuts to speed it up. And I'm gonna draw it, resize it. This is where you can just build your own grass. It's a little bit hard, grab that dot in the middle to make sure you move it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just doodling. There is one other thing, so hang around, I'll show you in a sec. Okay, copy, paste, move it around. Okay, so I'm not too worried about these being kind of down here because I'm gonna show you a technique to kind of trim them up. So I'm gonna select all these, copy and paste it. I've got another version, okay. And with them all selected, I can scale them all in one go. So it's gonna look something like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select them all, okay, and I'm gonna go U, and I'm gonna get a fill of this kind of like dark gray color. I'll show you what I'm gonna do in a second. You saw it at the beginning, right? So uh, move him back in, nice. Cool, so we've used my drawing now and it's kind of done its dash, okay? We've got our kind of full drawing now. I wanna go into my layers panel and let's just turn the visibility of it off. So this eyeball layer here, if you click on that, you'll notice it disappears. You can leave it there, okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm just turning it off so I can't see it. It kind of brings me to my next point. I don't know why I'm, I need to resize this. My next point is when you're scaling things, well, look what happened by default. So if I select everything, so black arrow, drag a box around all of it. Okay, under properties, there's an important thing here. Okay, actually, you know, before you select anything, there's this one here, scale, stroke, and effects. Okay, so there's gonna be times when you need this on and sometimes when you need it off. So 
And if, if it's off, look what happens. If I select this and I scale it down, say so I just need a smaller version of them. So I've selected all, uh, I'm gonna scale it down. And like we did when we're drawing lots of shapes, if we hold down shift while we're scaling it, it locks the height and width. Otherwise it gets all kind of stretchy. Okay, so shift down. And look what happens when I get down quite small. Okay, it's remembered that this is five points. Okay, and it just does some weird stuff when it gets down to here, right? Because it's it's trying to kind of remember the actual uh, radiuses that we used, uh, okay, around here, and it's, it's doing some strange things. So sometimes you want that, okay? You want to scale it down a bit and retain the stroke width, but I'm going to go to Edit Undo, and with nothing selected, I'm going to turn that on, and it's going to scale those strokes now, okay? Proportionally to the size that I've got. Now when I scale it down, I hold down shift and I scale it down, you can see these guys, these stars here, they come down and they're a smaller size, they're like three points now. Okay, so that's just kind of something you need to kind of be aware of when you're scaling things, is that sometimes you want them to scale with, uh, you know, appropriately, and sometimes you want them to get actually smaller, so you'll turn that on and off. Okay, last little thing is I'm just gonna, I don't know, make this look a little nicer with some rectangles, I'm gonna use I draw a rectangle that covers kind of the bottom here. I'm just gonna match the same color as my grass. Actually, I might use the black arrow and get it to snap to the bottom of my fox. I'm gonna use the same color as that. So fill, and which one is it? Lucky first guess. And um, same with the sky here. Okay, I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and spacebar, drag up a little bit. And let's have a nice starry sky. Snaps in. Fill color, I'm gonna use another one of the darker grays. That dark. Okay, with it selected, arrange, send it back. And I might make these stars just white, even though we spent ages talking about the strokes of these guys. Goodbye stroke. And the fill might be up to, I don't know what I'm doing. Listen about now. All right, so that is my, uh, or our fox uh, drawn um, out of just really basic shapes. And there's so much you can do just with those shapes. Now, like I said at the beginning, often it's a combination of, well, I've kind of kept this design to specific shapes just to kind of like, I guess, work through some of the tools. But often you'll find you'll be using things like the uh, Shape Builder tool and the Pen tool, which we'll do in, uh, yeah, the next tutorials. Also my process, like um, you saw how we kind of started with a drawing first. I do that really often, right? I'll I'll kind of draw in my notebook because I find that just it's just easier and quicker. Um, and then often I don't even do a scan Okay, to redraw in Illustrator, I just get a general sense of it in my notebook. Now, my drawing here look really good, right? Well, it look really good. It's perfect, you know, it's kind of like follows the lines. It's never that good. I'll show you, I'll cut to um, this uh, shot here, jump across. So here it is, I just took a photo of my notebook here. That is the glorious uh, fox. I just kind of drew a little bit and kind of got it close. And I wouldn't scan that and redraw, I just used it as a kind of a visual and then just started yeah, drawing an illustrator kind of to perfect it, I guess, it look, uh, yeah, to get a nicer shape. But yeah, that's kind of more of a truer sense of my process. I will just do a really kind of basic drawing and then draw straight into illustrator. Okay, so that's the end of how to draw with basic shapes. And what I'd like to do now is challenge you to a challenge. And it's to take kind of the same techniques. So you're gonna let her use uh, rectangles, stars, lines, those types of things, and create your own animal. It can be sleeping like mine, it doesn't have to be. Okay, just something simple, pick some different colors. It can, it can still be a mammal, okay? So you can use the whiskers, <laughs> it can still be sleeping, it can use stars, but just pick a different animal, dog, cat, some sort of animal. And I'd love to see it as part of your project. So give it a go. I'd love to see what you have done. So when you've done it, doesn't matter how good you think it is or bad it is, please post it as a project. I'd love to see it. All right, uh, let's get on to the next video. Hi there, in this video we're going to look at the Shape Builder tool. I love this tool. It's absolutely my most favorite tool out of all of the tools in Illustrator. And we're going to take this drawing that we did of the fox with simple shapes and ta-da, add some kind of shadows to it. We're not so much exciting about the shadows, but more the technique that we use the Shape Builder tool to kind of be able to carve out extra colors within other shapes. I love it. Let's go and learn how to use it now. All right, to get started with the Shape Builder tool, let's start with a really simple file. Go to File Open. There is a file in here called Shape Builder. Click Open. Now this file is not very exciting. All it is is I'm on my black arrow. It's just a couple of circles on top of a rectangle. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I would like to say this circle to join this rectangle. 
So I'm going to use my black arrow and select them all. And we're going to go to the Shape Builder tool. It's this guy here. He is the absolute best thing that ever happened to Illustrator. Okay, and what it allows me to do is you can see by default there's a little plus next to my cursor there. Okay, what I can do is watch this. I can hover above this, click, hold down my mouse, and just drag a line. You see I drag it across all three of these kind of parts, and they are fused now as one thing. And that is just awesome. No more Pathfinder and trying to join things. It's really easy. Simple shapes using the Shape Builder tool, and they join. Another cool trick is that if I hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, you can see it changes from a plus to a minus. So what I can do now is I want to minus this and this. I'm holding down my mouse key, okay, and I can drag across those two bits to minus those bits off. Okay, so that is its main two uses, joining things and minusing things. It also has another little trick where um, I've got these two bits selected, right? And what I can do is I can pick a fill color, let's say this, and use it for not minusing or adding, but just coloring in bits. So I'm going to click off in the background here and watch this. I can just click on that, okay? And it uses that as the fill color. Just really handy to go through, pick a color, click off, click in there, and it just fills shapes. Okay, I can go back to my black arrow, and now if I click off, it's actually just three separate shapes that are being colored in. Let's use it in a kind of a practical sense now. So let's close this guy. I don't want to save him because it wasn't that exciting. Okay, so before we go and create our own kind of like custom shapes with the Shape Builder tool, I'm going to show you how I use it mostly. So I want you to open up the fox that we made earlier. If you haven't done that tutorial, you can cheat, go to the exercise files and download one called Shape Builder 2. Open them up. So what I'd like to do is I want to kind of add some shadows to this, like um, you saw at the beginning of this video. Okay, and so first thing we have to do is with the black arrow, let's just grab this background and just move it over to the side just to make life a little easier. Let's go to the layers and turn off the view of the template. We'll move it back in uh, later on. So what I'd like to do is I'm just going to start with the head. Okay, I'm going to grab the line tool. I'm going to draw a line that goes from this ear. And I'm going to go all the way through his kind of face here just to show you how good the Shape Builder tool is. I'm going to grab the um, black arrow. And I'm going to have this selected plus holding shift and grabbing this selected. So I've got the head and the line there, just those two. And go to properties. Okay, I'm going to go to my Shape Builder tool. And I want to color it. So like we did earlier with the red and the blue, I'm going to pick a fill color. I'm going to go to my swatches here. I'm going to pick the orange. I'm going to move to this like color mixer, pre-made swatches here, color mixer here. And I want to make it a bit dark. Watch this. This K is black. Okay. You can see if I drag it up, it gets a bit dark. I'm going to go to maybe 10%. Okay. You can be a bit more flexible with yours. And now just need to click anywhere out to close that box. Cool. Now when I hover above, I click once and I've got this lovely dark lovely okay <laughs> it's fine um so yeah cast the shadow here now next thing i want to do is grab my black arrow and just click off in the background okay there are some bits left over that thing there if you've got some black hanging off the end here you can just select it and hit delete don't need it anymore next thing i want to do is maybe cast a shadow underneath its chin same thing line tool cast some sort of fake casting shadow thing <laughs> okay black arrow hold shift so i've got both the line and this body selected Go to actually you can't go to fill yet. You've got to go to the shape builder tool. Okay, then go to fill. And then I'm gonna use that. You can see it's the last color that I used, and it's pre-mixed it. If it hasn't, you can go back to the swatches, click this one, go here, do 10%. Hopefully you can use the last mixed. Save some time. Okay, and I'm just gonna hover above. Maybe I'm gonna click out, hover above this, click once. And this is gonna run into our first problem with the shape builder tool. Okay, grab the selection tool, click off in the background. You can see this has ended up above everything, okay, which is fine. Okay, all I need to do is with it selected with the black arrow, click a range and send to back. Now we've been using send to back. You might just need to send backwards. Backwards goes back one step. Okay, if I click backwards now, it's not gonna quite work. It's probably going behind, I don't know, this. And you can keep going backwards, and it's just one step at a time, backwards backwards and eventually you'll get there okay i'm going to go arrange send to complete back awesome now i'm going to do a couple more shadows you can follow along if you like i'm going to grab this copy and paste it make it bigger i'm going to use it like uh, for a shadow for his bum i'm going to select both of these holding shift okay with my black arrow move to the shape builder tool pick a fill color uh, last use color didn't work okay i'm going to go to here and pick 10 percent click off and then click that one Back to my black arrow, click off in the background, grab him, 
don't need you anymore, buddy. Uh, I'm going to do the same with the tail here. Copy, paste it, make it a bit bigger, use it to kind of make some sort of tail shadow. Select both of them, holding shift, go to my Shape Builder tool. You will get it after a time. Like Shape Builder tool is one of the shortcuts I use loads. If I hover above the tool, can you see it says uh, Shift M? Okay, that's both for Mac and PC. If I hold down the Shift key on my keyboard and type M, it jumps to the Shape Builder tool. And the black arrow is V. So very often I'm going V, Shift M. You can see in my toolbar, I'm kind of jumping between the two by just clicking those keys. All right, fill. Um, I'm going to use this one, 10%. Click off, and I'm going to say you. Go back to my black arrow, which is the V key. Delete this one. I'm going to create some sort of line here. Now I'm just mucking about. You can skip on if you like. Okay, select both of them. Shift M. Pick a darker color than I had before from my swatches. About that. Kind of looks like he's doing casting a shadow from the moonlight. Okay, I'm going to grab this one, drag it back in. Okay, snap it up. You'll notice that it's it's in the wrong kind of layer order. So I'm going to do is select them, arrange, and send to back. And that's kind of how I use the Shape Builder a lot. I kind of get the basics in with some shapes and then use other shapes and the Shape Builder tool to kind of construct some more sophisticated uh, artwork. All right, so that's kind of updating an existing drawing. Let's go and make something cool in the next video, totally with the Shape Builder tool. It's pretty nice, and it's one of those styles that are trending at the moment. So let's go and look how to do that in the next video. Hi there. In this video, we're going to make this swooshy looking fox thing using my favorite tool, the Shape Builder tool. Look at him. He's all made of little shapes and bits and pieces. Okay, let's put you back together, fox, and let's go learn how to make you an Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so let's start with a new document. File new, you can use US Letter Landscape or A4 Landscape, it doesn't matter. Click on Create. And we're gonna bring in the little drawing we're gonna copy from. Okay, so let's save this document, File Save, and let's put it on our desktop in our Illustrator class files. Let's call this one Awake Fox. And let's click OK. Let's bring in the image we're gonna redraw. Okay, we're gonna to go to File Place. And we're going to use in our exercise files, there's one called awakefox.jpg. And remember, like in a previous uh, tutorial, we could just bring it in and put it on its own layer and lock it and turn the transparency down. You can do that all in one file swoop by just clicking this template as you bring it in. And remember, watch this, it's created two layers. One's a template layer and you can't touch it. Okay, and they've dimmed it down so you can draw on it easily. And we're working on layer one. Let's go back to properties. Now, there is no real particular order to start this, but you might as well follow me. Okay, so uh, let's start with, say, the polygon tool. And if we click once, we're going to make sure it says three sides. We're not too worried about the radius at the moment. Just click OK. And what we can do is black arrow, uh, holding shift, drag it out to the right size and rotate it around. Okay, we did rotation and scale in an earlier tutorial. Okay, I'm going to get it roughly in there. Now, you'll notice that it tries to snap to the edge of the page and like lots of those purple arrows, that's really handy. Sometimes it's just nice to get it close and use your arrow keys on your keyboard. Okay, just to kind of tap it around with the keyboard to get it kind of close. I'm happy with that. And what I'd like to do is have no fill and a black stroke. So I've got my black stroke. If you don't, click on stroke, click black, fill color. Let's go for no fill color. Now I'm not sure which part to start with. I'm gonna start with the ears here. So I'm gonna grab and hold down the polygon tool, and grab the ellipse tool. And I'm gonna draw an ellipse. Just uh, holding down shift, remember gets a perfect circle. If I let go of shift, it can, can get a weird shape. It's up to you what you wanna do. I'm gonna start with perfect circles. Something like that, black arrow. Remember I can't click the center because it has no fill. So I'm gonna click the edge and kind of drag it. And you can kind of see, I'm gonna use it maybe for that one and it's a bit big. I'm just resizing it until I get something close to that part. Using my keyboard to tap it around again. Cool, so that'll do. I'm going to copy it and paste it and then move it up so I've got it kind of here as well. Okay, I think I used a slightly smaller one. There we go. Even smaller than that. I'm trying to match that circle in there. That will do. Cool, all right. Uh, so next thing I'd like to do is start using my Shape Builder tool. So I'm going to select everything. Okay, so my black arrow, select everything on the page, and I'm going to move to my Shape Builder tool. 
Now, what I want to do is I don't want to add any of these guys. I want to subtract this chunk up here that I don't need. Now, who remembers what the shortcut is? That's right. It's option on a Mac or alt on a PC. Okay, hold it down. You see I get a minus and I can drag across all of that, that, that. Uh, click on him. You can see I can kind of minus those chunks off. I want to leave that because that's going to be the kind of white of the nose. These guys, though, need, they're doing some weird stuff. So I'm going to join them all. Remember, holding no keys down will add. Okay, I'm going to add all that to it. I'm going to minus that off. I'm going to minus that off. And yeah, that's kind of the basics for it. All right, um, I'm going to grab my black arrow. And what do I want to do now is I want the other ear. So I'm just going to copy it, paste it. I've got another version. This guy here, I can't quite remember. I don't know. I'm going to rotate it around a little bit. Awesome. Cool. So I've got another set of ears back here. Maybe not so much rotation. Cool. Now with everything selected, again, let's grab the uh, Shape Builder tool. And that bit's perfect. Now I just want to join these together, that bit there. Now the nose got all kind of disjointed with all these little bits. You might have to zoom in a little bit. Remember Command Plus or Control Plus. And I'm going to join all of that together so it's one unit. Now it starts looking a bit hard because you're like, what is the drawing underneath and which is mine? You might go to Layers and turn this on and off just to get a sense of what it is. So the only thing I'm really missing is the circle for the eye. So let's do that. Grab the Ellipse tool. Drag this out. Why am I dragging out up here? No reason. I'm going to drag it down here. Habit. Move it around. Select all of this chunk. And I'm going to grab the sh uh, Shape Builder tool. And I'm going to, what am I going to do? I want to, I want to add all of that together. And that kind of worked. Cool. All right. Uh, on off on that bottom layer. It's looking good. Now we just need the neck. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and grab an ellipse tool. Try and draw a circle big enough for that outside bit. Um, holding shift. That feels about right. Um, all right. Nope, that's way too big. <laughs> Hold it down. Remember grabbing the edge, not the center of the circle. So I've got him, and there's one stripe, two stripes. So I'm going to copy and paste him, and I'll use that one. Yeah, he's roughly the right size. Paste another one. Actually, I don't need to paste another one. There's only two there. Okay. Um, don't need that guy. Go away. <laughs> all right, so I am now going to select it all, grab my Shape Builder tool, and I'm going to say, I don't want you. Don't want you. Well, actually, I do want you. There's the ellipse there. Why did I delete that one? <laughs> I do need it. Okay, so there was a circle that I was missing. You probably saw it while you were doing it. I went, no. There it is there. <laughs> we do need three circles. Now, one of the things is going to happen here. If I zoom in, okay, and scroll up here, holding my space bar, you see it doesn't kind of line up here. To make the shape builder work kind of nicely, you need to overlap everything. So I'm zoomed in. It's just easier when you've zoomed in. Okay, now I'm going to grab the edge and you'll try and get it to snap in there. It's reasonably forgiving. It doesn't have to be absolutely scientifically perfect, but reasonably close. A couple of pixels. Now I'm going to select it all. I'm going to grab my Shape Builder tool and I'm going to say I don't want that. I don't want any of that. I don't want that. I don't need that. I don't need that. And I'm going to come in here. What I might do now is turn off the template because I kind of know those two I want, those two I want. If you're finding it a little bit tough, don't worry. It is a little bit tough trying to work out. You end up deleting the wrong bits. Like there's a chunk through here. I'm going to add you guys together. Black arrow, select the background. Yeah, we're pretty close. Okay, there's some weird strokes going on that are different sizes. There's a thin one there and a thick one there. I'm going to select them all and say properties. And I'm going to give them all the same stroke width of this 0.25 points. Okay, just a really thin one to get us going. All right, that is looking good. If you find you've got like kind of junk in the nose, like there's a little trim bit, just zoom in, use your Shape Builder tool to try and tidy it up. You might even use a black arrow, just click bits and delete it. Okay, now what I want to do is go and color it. Now I'm going to put in a nice big gray background. I don't know why, everything looks better on a dark gray background. I'm just drawing a nice big rectangle. I'm going to fill it with our dark gray. Okay, and I'm going to have no stroke on it. I'm going to click Arrange, send it to the back, and now I'm going to fill this with color. Okay, and um, there's a couple of ways of filling it. I can just click the edges, okay, and go and fill it, or I could use the Shape Builder technique like we did in the last video. It's up to you. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go pick colors, foxy colors. Okay, I'm going to mix my own. I'm going to click on the mixer, okay, where I've got my, uh, got my object selected. I've clicked on Fill, I've clicked on Mixer, and I'm going to click down here to 
try and find a foxy color. Okay, that's going to be my kind of lead color. I'll pick this one, click on fill. I'm going to use the premix color and just make it a bit darker by grabbing the K and lifting it up a little bit. Cool. I'm going to use this kind of back of the head bit by doing the same sort of thing. Okay, I'm going to use that, but lighten it up. Okay, go even lighter. Cool. This bit here is going to be just, should be white. Maybe, maybe I'm going to use just like an off-white. So it looks cool. Same with you. And off-white. All right, I'm going to select it all as well. Okay, now if I select all of it, okay, I'm going to end up with the background selected as well. And that's fine because I want to go to stroke and I want to say none of you's got a stroke. Thank you very much. And that is our cool little fox thing. Um, all done with the shape builder tool. Get some nice kind of swooshes and swirls and it's kind of flowy. Okay, those are words I'm just making up, but you get the idea, right? It's this kind of nice swooshy thing. So now it is time for the end and the time for the class project. So what I've done is I've done another sketch that you can use that I want you to go through and use the same techniques from the Fox, but we're going to use a, a new document, use file place, and you're going to bring in this one called Swan. Yes, that's meant to be a swan. Okay, I drew it kind of look like a swan, kind of a chunky swan. You're allowed to, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect like this. I guess what I want to see is a better swan, nice colors. Um, yeah, it's totally up to you. You can draw it perfectly if you like. Okay, but using the same tools as we did using the shape builder tool and the fox. Okay, I'd like you to go off and do the swan. And again, I'd like to see your projects. All right, uh, that is it for this video. Let's get on to the next one. Actually, no, you're going to get off and start doing your homework. Draw the swan, make them better. All right, see you in the next video, though. Hi there. In this video, we're going to draw this shape here. We're going to use the Shape Builder tool. I know I've used it for a couple of tutorials already, but it's a really versatile tool, and I use it so much that, yes, it gets three videos. The cool thing about this kind of impossible triangle is that it's super possible with the Shape Builder tool. And although this video is about five minutes long, it really only takes less than a minute to make this particular shape. Um, given our super powerful shape builder tool, let's go and learn how to do that now in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so to make our little shape, we are going to go to File, go to New, and like always, Letter, Landscape, and hit Create. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to start with some lines. We're going to start with three of them. So I'm going to grab the Line Segment tool. I'm going to draw out a line. And the cool thing about the line segment tool, watch this, I can draw any sort of line, right? But if I hold down shift, watch this, shift locks it into kind of like 45, 90 degrees, nice angles. So I want it to be straight. So I'm holding shift and just drag out a line about that big. I'm going to have no fill. I'm going to have a stroke okay, of black, and it's going to be one point. So black arrow, I'm going to move it to an appropriate place, and I'm going to make copies. So with it selected, go to edit, copy, edit, paste. I'm using control C, control V. Paste another one. And what I want to do is show you a couple of things. One is I'm going to select all of these guys. Actually, I'm going to get it to a rough kind of place, right? Like that. But they're not distributed nicely. I'm going to select them all. And first thing I want to do is make sure the spacing between them is even. So I'm going to go to, you can see by default under the properties panel, I've got a line. But you can see it only does the basics. I can align center, which is what I want. You can see they don't quite line up, so align center is great, but the distribute's not there. See this little dotted line here? This shows you that there's more options for the align panel. They just show you the kind of basics, the main stuff you need. I'm going to click on this one. You can see there's a lot more options. And in this case, I want distribute vertical centers. Okay, and you can see it just all lines up nicely there. All right. Next thing I want to do is I want to make another copy of these three. So I've got them all selected with my black arrow, edit copy, edit paste and I want to rotate them around now I want it to be a triangle so um, I need it to be like I can never work out the math so nice thing you can do in Illustrator is see over here with these guys selected I've got in my properties panel I've got this um, you know way of changing the rotation and I know that I need to take 360 degrees and divide it by three so you can do math in these things I do them quite often because my math is terrible Okay, so divide by three and return, and it's 120, turns out. Okay, you probably know that already. I don't. Uh, I've got this one. I'm going to copy and paste it. And what I'd like to do for this one is I know that it's 120 times two. Okay, so that should get me my other angle. So well, I'm hoping. Return, there it is there, 240. I should be able to do math like that. But 
<laughs> can't. So um, I've got my kind of basic building blocks for this one. And this is where it gets super easy, I guess. A bit, bit mind-bending because we're doing like an impossible triangle, but super nice and quick. So I'm going to grab the line segment tool and just draw off. If you're unsure which ones, you've got kind of four diamonds here. Draw off the top of these two, okay? And draw these. And you can see it kind of goes from intersect to intersect. It's pretty clever at kind of joining these things up. If yours doesn't, make sure View Smart Guides has got a tick next to it. If it doesn't, turn it on. Okay, so that's nearly done, right? I'm gonna grab my black arrow, select on it all, and over to my favorite tool. That's why it gets three videos. It's very used to, uh, versatile. I'm gonna grab the Shape Builder tool. And now it's trying to work out, what I might do to tidy it up is get rid of these excess lines. So hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC to delete them, and just drag through these guys. Just dragging through, don't need that bit either. It's a really cool slicey tool. If you ever use a scissors tool, it's a pain in the bum. This one here, super nice and quick. Now we need to join some bits up, and I had to practice this loads, just so you know. If you're finding it tough, don't worry, everyone does. Well, at least I did. So I'm gonna click, hold, and drag there, to so the outside to the inside. Okay, outside to the inside. That's what I have to keep telling myself, outside to the inside. And that kind of does it, right? Then I join these guys up, these guys up. I'll show you just a kind of, it's really complex shape, okay, but with a Shape Builder tool, it's pretty quick and easy, I love it. So what I'd like you to do now is, all well, these are separate shapes. I'd like you to go through, color them, okay? Give it a background color as well with a nice big rectangle. And I'd like to see what you've designed and built and the colors that you've used. I'd love to see it as a project. All right, that is gonna be it for the last of the Shape Builder tools. Now we need to get on to the Pen tool and the Curvature tool. All right, I'll see you in the video. Hi there, in this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to use the Curvature tool in Adobe Illustrator. We're gonna draw these four guys. Yeah, so let's get into it. All right, to get started, file new document. Surprise, surprise, it's gonna be letter. Let's click Create. Let's save this one, and we'll save it into our desktop, into our Illustrator class files. And this one's gonna be called the Curvature tool. So Curvature tool, that'll do. Click Save, click OK. All right, we're gonna bring in our image that we're gonna trace. So let's go to File Place. And it's in your exercise files. Look for one called Redraw Image. And let's make sure it's a template because it's gonna put it in the background and gray it out and lock it so it can't be moved. All right, next thing I wanna do is I would like to use our Curvature tool. Now make sure on your Layers panel you're on this top layer here. Okay, we're gonna grab our curvature tool. It looks like quite like the pen tool, right? Now the pen tool is, we're gonna do that in the next tutorial. It's like the hardcore version, okay? The curvature tool is newish to Illustrator and man, when you're learning and you're new, there's very little time where you actually need to go to the really hardcore tool. So curvature tool, we love you, making the pen tool that little bit easier to learn. So I'm gonna zoom in, remember, Command plus or Control plus on my PC. What did I hold down on my keyboard to move up? Okay, remember I held down spacebar, get the hand, click and hold, drag my mouse. And now we're gonna draw our alien. So we're gonna start with the eye in the middle. Basically, it's easier if I just show you and you get a sense for it, and then we can draw the next ones together. So I'm gonna click once at the top, or once on the side, and nothing really happens until I move my kind of cursor out. I'm not doing anything, it's just connected naturally. Click once, that's all I'm doing. Clicking once more, and clicking a last time. Cool, huh? Okay, just goes through. All I did was click once with my mouse and it kind of knew that I was trying to draw curves because I'm using the curvature tool. What I'm gonna do is a couple of things before I draw this next one, is I'm gonna make sure the fill is set to none. Okay, I'm gonna have a black stroke, that's fine. Also, when, what I'm gonna do is under view, let's turn off smart guides, okay? So if your tick's on like this, turn it off. It's just, uh, you know, sometimes it's super handy, like we'll do for the um, crown next, but sometimes it's a bit of a pain. So in this case, it's a pain. Um, so what we're gonna do is draw this outer eye. And again, like we could try, like you definitely need more than two points, right? If I click on there and there, and it just can't make it a circle. So I could click once and try and do it three, Okay, getting there, getting there. It just doesn't get to kind of a nice circle. So a circle or an ellipse needs at least four points. You can have more, but the more you have, the kind of less smooth it looks. Pretty cool, huh? So give that a go, do those circles, and then we're gonna look at these other ones, and it's pretty much the same thing. Um, let's start at the top here, click once, click here again, 
Okay, and where am I looking? Like the circle was easy enough, okay? So it's all four corners. Um, and this one here kind of turns in on itself. So what you're looking for is the apex, okay? Or where the, where the curve changes the most, okay? So along the top here, that's where it changes. Like this curve here changes the most at this top point because it's kind of symmetrical. On this curve where it kind of changes, it's about here. Maybe it could be a bit further up like this. You can click and drag them like I just did there to move them. Okay, and then you're looking for this curve this way and where the middle of it is just kind of about there. And I click once and you're like, oh, it doesn't work. But then you move your mouse off and it kind of tries to kind of, yeah, it does a pretty good job, right? So where this curve goes all the way around. So the apex of this one changing here is about on the corner here. Now, in this case, don't worry about the second line just yet. There's a little bit of faith that goes into this, okay? So it's gonna take some practice, but I could add another one here because there's a, you know, there's a curve there and there's another curve here and there's a curve here and those are the kind of apexes of it. There's another curve there, another kind of apex corner there. You can kind of start to see what I'm doing. Now, I can adjust this afterwards. I know that that one's not quite right. Don't worry for your first pass. Let's try another leg. Now, what I've found through my practice is that the, you know, the, the least amount of anchor points you can get away with, that's what these little dots are. So I know that if I click on this side and click on this side and then come up here, can you see it kind of fills out that bottom part for me? So I'm looking for that apex, apex of that curve. Apex are out here, the apex of this curve is about there. There's one kind of there. And there's one at the top here, one there. I'm just gonna go and click them all now. After a while, you get kind of confident and you get to kind of know where everything goes. You can see when I get back to the beginning, that's the little icon. It's actually, you just click on it and it works. Okay, but just so you know, see that little icon, the little zero, it means it's gonna kind of complete this complete path. Okay, over here, it's gonna be adding a new path. I want that one, that little icon with the little zero, that kind of means I'm gonna finish it all off. Cool, so it's kind of working. So that's uh, the idea with the curvature tool. You block in the kind of hard stuff or the core of it, and then you can make adjustments afterwards. Now remember the black arrow, if I click on it, uh, it moves things in its entirety. Remember the white arrow that we looked at earlier on? Okay, this adjusts the finer points of it. Okay, and what I can do is there's a big kind of mess over here, so I can click on this. Now what you're looking for is, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You can see these little anchor points here. I've got these thing called handles that pop out. These little handles influence the way the line goes through. So your curvature tool is putting these in automatically. They're always there, but the curvature tool just kind of hides them away because they're a bit nerdy. But when we get to a point where we want kind of some fine adjustment, the nerdiness helps. So what we might do is, and you can see here, this curve doesn't actually go through the line properly. Okay, so I might have to move the anchor points. What influences the line quite a bit though is these handles. Okay, they kind of pull the line. Okay, watch this. If I grab one of the darker um, dots, you can kind of see if I'm pulling it in and out, okay, to adjust the way the line works, and I can move it left and right. Okay, so it kind of influences it like gravity. So what I'm gonna do is kind of like drag it down here. This anchor point probably needs a bit of work down here. This one's gonna move around. So you can do some finer adjustment now. I click on this one, drag it down. You can drag it in towards itself as well. Most people forget that you can do that. Okay, so in close to it, you can see it's actually quite a tight curve. Okay, and the further out it comes, the more kind of exaggerated that curve is. So there's gonna be a little bit of finesse that goes in this. Now don't sweat it for your first version. Okay, we're not gonna make this absolutely perfect. And we're looking for just a kind of a general understanding of the curvature tool, even though I'm clearly in front of you trying to tidy this up perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna leave it there. And um, what you might find is, say you've put in too little, okay? Say you've not got enough curves. And what you can do back with a curvature tool here is, let's say we've got too many. I know we do down here. There's kind of like four in this row here. You can just hover above them, okay? And you can click on them and just hit delete key and just gets rid of them. I'm gonna click on this guy, and hit delete key. Okay, and it just gets rid of them. Same thing to add them. You, actually not. Um, actually, you just kind of hover above and see the curvature tool changes to have this little plus here. Okay, you can say I want to add one there. Okay, then I can go to my, I can move it by just using this. Okay, and then if I want to make adjustments again, back to the white arrow. You, I said don't worry about it, and I spend the next like two minutes worrying about it. All right, so that's going to be it for this guy. Let's leave him and move on to the next thing, because the curvature tool is awesome but it does curves so i'm going back to the curvature tool i'm at this crown here and if i click once 
click once again, click once again. Like it's not gonna work, right? It's trying to do curves everywhere. It's cool, it's like kind of like a lily pad thing, but it's not what I want. So you can use the curvature tool to do kind of straight corners. It's quite easy. All you need to do is double click for a corner. Okay, so double click, double click your mouse, double click your mouse, double click your mouse, double click your mouse, you get the picture. If you forget and click once and you're like, whoops, forgot to do the double click, you can just go back and double click it. Okay, and it converts it back to a corner. So one click is a curve, like we've already done, but double click it and it goes back to a corner. Double click, double click, double click, and back to the beginning. Remember that little circle that we're looking for? Okay, nice. All right, so that's how to do curves, our very average looking alien, and our very simple looking crown, which is corners, and we use that by double clicking. Now, ninja time. Okay, ninja has curves and corners, and this is more typical of what you're gonna be doing, right? So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay, so what I'd like to do is a mixture of both. So I'm gonna work through it with you, okay? And we'll start down the bottom here and work our way up. So you've gotta kind of just ask yourself the question, until it becomes more of a habit, just ask yourself, is this a double click or is this uh, a single click? So is this a corner or a curve? This thing here is a corner, like an edgy corner thing, sharp. Okay, so I double click. Now, um, if I, uh, this is a curve here. So remember, where is the apex? It's kind of, it's only a small curve, but it's about there. So I click once for a corner or double click for a corner. That's right, once for a corner. Okay, now this guy in here, you can kind of see it's doing the curve, nice. Now this bit here, is a corner, okay, is a nice sharp change of direction, and double click. Up here, double click, like our crown, double click, double click. You be, might be tempted to go all the way across here, but no, we've got to address this curve here, okay, and it's clicking once, because it's a uh, curve. Here, sharp corner, double click. Now, a circle, remember, needs like at least four points, so one, two, three, let's give that a go. So, uh, let's go one there, one there, don't worry about it, you know, it's like, oh, it's not quite working. But then if you come around, oh, look at that, it's looking good. And then back to here, and you're like, oh, whoops, I clicked once, and I got a curve again. What do we do? We double click it, and it goes back to a corner. Uh, click once for a curve, double click for a corner, double click for a corner. This is a tricky one, because you're like, mm, where's the curve? There's the curve out there. I say click once there for a, cor uh, for a curve. Double click here for a straight line. Okay, and I double click here. That's kind of a weird one, right? Because there's kind of a curve and then a straight line. And um, let's go to here, curve, double click for a corner, back to the beginning looking for that circle. And we have some sort of, <laughs> some sort of like squat ninja. He's, he's like Lego ninja or something. Anyway, let's have a look at doing this inside one because that's, uh, I guess, an interesting one as well. The circles, we could just use the ellipse tool, I realize, but we're not going to because we are learning the curvature tool. And just like at the beginning, we did the eye, it's just four clicks, because they're all curves, and we do in all corners. It's pretty cool, huh? They're pretty good circles. Now, this guy here. So I'm gonna start at this curve, because that's clearly a curve, okay? And then go around to here, and this is one of those tricky ones again, where there's a curve finishing and a straight line starting. And I know that um, because it's curved there, we've got the curve part, that's what's making the line curved. Now here I want to double click. Okay, I want to double click to get a straight line over here. Click once for a curve and double click for a line. You can see this, you're like, that's not working. It's because uh, we haven't finished the line yet, okay? So double click here to get a straight line and then back to once. Uh, you can see here it's gonna work. We click once for a curve. Okay, there's a little bit of, I guess, experience that comes along with knowing some of these more exaggerated lines. But if you're thinking like, why didn't he just grab the rectangle tool and then grab the black arrow and do that? Because that's exactly what I would do. But we're learning the curvature tool. <laughs> okay, so we draw ellipses and we'd probably do that for the center. Uh, let's have a look at the next one. Actually, we're not gonna have a look at the next one. You're gonna do this one by yourself. Okay, I want you to see if you can do this owl. Okay, I want you to do them, I want you to color them, and I'd like to see uh, an image of it. So stick it in the comments or in the projects. I want you to see how this owl goes. And yeah, you can fancy them up if you like, or just do them nice and simple, a nice simple icon, give them some color. And yeah, I'd love to see this guy to prove that you've done it. And if you're up for it, let's color them all. 
okay? <laughs> you do some sort of ninja alien montage, okay? So um, I'd love to see what you've done with these. And yeah, we're gonna move on to the next exercise. Hi there, it is time to learn the pen tool. Pen tool is the hardest thing to learn in Illustrator. We're gonna do it together. We're gonna make this ninja. We're gonna make an owl. We're gonna make an alien and we're gonna make a crown. Let's draw those now together in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, to get started, no, I'm not gonna make you import it again and make it as a template. I am going to save you some time. Go to exercise files, open up one called pen tool and I've kind of done that for you. Okay, and just make sure on the layer one. Okay, go to your properties panel and we're gonna zoom in on this alien. Okay, and we're gonna build the same things, okay, to show the kind of differences between the pen tool and the curvature tool. Now, basically the curvature tool does a lot of thinking for you and it's pretty good and pretty intuitive, but there's times we just need to like get the pen tool to do exactly what you want. Okay, so grab the pen tool, it's just above the curvature tool here. Okay, and what we'll do is, you can see mine is set as a crosshairs, it's because I've got caps lock on. Some people prefer to use the pen tool like this, okay, and it comes out of the tip of that little pen, or you can hit caps lock on your keyboard, okay, and you can see it becomes a crosshairs. Okay, I'm gonna do it just like this. So I'm gonna zoom in, see my whole guy, and, okay, so what happens with our pen tool is that by default, it wants to do corners, kind of the opposite of the curvature tool. So if I click once, click once, click once, it's only gonna give me, it's gonna give me a very interesting uh, octopus, okay? So clicking once gives you corners. I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo all that, go back. Okay, so what you do with the pen tool is you click and drag to get a curve. So at the top here, I click and drag. And this is probably the hardest thing to do is to get it started. Because I click and drag out, but there's no curve. But I'm on the apex. But once you get it out here, you can see it's kind of, you can see it's a curve because it's connected. Plus you see those handles instantly, whereas the curvature tool, they were hidden. Okay, so same thing on the apex here. I click and people just click once. Remember, clicking once gives you a corner for the uh, pen tool. Okay, so it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna undo. So click and drag down. I know dragging down because you want to kind of like continue the line, so follow the line, drag that way, but that can be a little confusing. Sometimes people drag this way and move it around. You get a bit of a sense for it after we've done our full kind of alien. So I'm dragging it out to get this to kind of line up. Don't worry if you don't quite get it, okay? You can fix it up afterwards with the white arrow. It's quite easy. Next thing I want to do is before I carry on, I want to give it no fill. So I'm going to go to the fill here, go red line, cool, click off. So remember, I'm gonna look for the same same kind of like uh, technique as the curvature tool. I'm looking for this apex here. I'm gonna click, hold, and drag down for a corner. And this is gonna be clicking and dragging for the whole thing because there's no curves, right? Uh, sorry, no corners. So here I'm gonna click and drag and you're like, oh no, I can't get it. So don't worry too much about getting it perfect on the, uh, on the first go around. We can fix it with the white arrow and add and remove anchor points afterwards. Same thing here, click and drag, and you're just like, oh, it's too big, it's not quite working. It's okay, we can adjust these afterwards. Get it kind of close, okay? And I'm just gonna click, hold, and drag on all the apex of these curves. Click and drag. So remember, the apex is just kind of where the curve changes the most. So the curve changes quite a bit across here. Clicking and dragging, clicking and dragging, clicking and dragging, clicking and dragging. Again, dragging. If yours is going horribly wrong and it's still attached and it won't work, okay, and you're like, da, okay, what you can do is go either undo, so edit, undo, or command Z on a Mac or control Z on a PC, or you can hit the escape key. The escape key says detach, okay, stop trying to draw lines everywhere. So I'm going to undo, go back to here. So, um, Again, if you kind of click off and it's like half finished, what you can do is watch my cursor. I've got my pen tool, and I'm kind of just hovering above, hovering above. See that little change in the icon there, get the little straight line, that means like, do you mean this? I'm like, yep, that's what I meant. Okay, so I'm gonna click and drag that to get a curve. Uh, click and drag you, click and drag you. Another one there. Okay, so I'm just gonna work my way around this alien. Come here, alien. You back to here, and this is another um, kind of gotcha for people that are new. Is I come back here and you're like, great, just click once. And uh, unlike the curvature tool, it doesn't kind of like automatically adjust it. It kind of went, you click once, you mean a corner. So I put a corner in. So I'm going to undo. So I'm going to click and drag because I meant a curve. All right. 
Now, yours might not look anywhere near like mine. Mine's not that good either, but um, yours might be looking uh, a little worse for wear. What we can do, remember, is the uh, white arrow tool, the direct selection tool. We can click on these guys, okay, and we can adjust them. So I can click on the anchor point, move the anchor point along to make sure it's on the flow of the text, or sorry, the flow of the line, and grab these handles, okay, that influence the way the line passes through. And I can kind of just wiggle it around. Don't be afraid to move it around to get a feel for what it does and kind of start doing these adjustments. So here as well, I'm gonna tuck him in. I'm just gonna work my way around just to kind of fix this up a little bit. I'm not gonna to spend too much time on it. I say that every time and then I spend loads of time trying to make this thing look beautiful. As much as my quick little naff alien is, there we go. Oh yeah, beautiful Dan. And with this one as well, I've got my uh, smart guides off just because they can be a little hassle when you're using the pen tool trying to free form stuff. The um, smart guides, remember under view, smart guides, there it is there, I've got them off. Cool, uh, let's do the inside one, click and drag. Maybe that's the hard one because you're like, okay, then you follow whichever way you've dragged. If I drag up, I've got to kind of follow the line this way because it's coming out that way. If I drag down, it comes out of there there, click and drag. And with a circle, it needs at least four points to kind of look half decent. Okay, and you can see with the curvature tool, it does a lot of kind of like fixing up for you, which is quite cool. Um, but sometimes you just don't want that as well. So you, the pen tool's a little bit easier because it gives you a lot more kind of control, a lot more manual. All right, that'll do. Yes, I just used the ellipse tool probably <laughs> to get it looking really nice. And I am totally going to cheat now because I'm bored of this alien. I'm just going to grab my black arrow, click off, click on, copy paste. And my terrible circle is now just going to be a bit smaller. Done. All right, let's look at the crown. This move becomes easy. Pen tool loves this stuff. Don't have to hold anything down. Just click once, click once, click once. Okay, so with the pen tool, clicking and dragging gives you a curve. Clicking once gives you a corner point. Awesome. Okay, so then we get to our ninja. Hello, ninja. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. You'll find, notice that when you zoom out and you've got something else selected, it goes, hey, did you mean this? And so it kind of zooms out and moves back up there. And you're like, no, 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 down here, please. Okay, you can turn that off in the preferences. So we're gonna start down the bottom right-hand corner with the pen tool, and that is a corner. Okay, nice sharp corner, click once. Now, where is the curve? The curve here is, the apex of it is halfway through here, so I'm gonna click and drag. And this is a little hard because you're like, just need a little subtle one. Okay, so you end up kind of, give it a wiggle around, give it a feel for it, okay, as you're dragging at the handles, and when you get it here, that's it. Now, this is gonna be a corner, because it's a change of direction, okay, and this is gonna be a corner, so just click once, corner, click once, corner, click once, and then there's a little curve in here, okay, and click and drag, cool, click once for a corner, and Okay, we've got curves again, how many? Like, do I just want one? I could try and do one, just never gonna get the like right shape with just one of them. It's a fine old helmet thing. I'm looking for a perfect circle though. This happens lots, yeah. Okay, if you get close to the edge, it really wants to jump out. Um, and you can let go, go to undo, and then uh, zoom in or out, and it will kind of jump back to the center again. Cool, so what do I want? I want I know through experience that it, a circle needs four. We kind of did it for the alien up here. Okay, so I need one there, one there, one there, and there's no bit down the bottom, so I don't need him. So clicking up and down. That's another one, like drag down, and people kind of, which way does it go? Okay, remember, you want to kind of drag and follow the line. There's another one there. Clicking and dragging. Clicking and dragging. Click once for a corner. If you get it wrong, Okay, and you come down here and you click once and you're like, oh no, what do I do? Okay, you can just leave it and we'll show you how to fix those up in a second. Just kind of leave it there. We'll leave it there. Okay, got a curve. I'm dragging it out. Don't, I'm going to try and fix it, but there's a bit of a problem there. So I'll come back and do that. Click once for a corner. Click once for a corner. Curve. Click and drag. Click once for a corner to get this kind of straight line started. Another straight line. Click and drag for a curve. And um, so that one's a corner where it should be a... Uh, yeah, so that one's a curve when it should be a corner, and this one I'm gonna draw as a curve when it should be a corner. Go back to here, click once. Now I've got a full shape. Now to do some adjustments, okay, there's two major things I need to fix, is I need to change these two, okay, and there's a full tool to do it. It's called the anchor point tool. 
Okay, so I click on this. If you're using an early version, um, I think it's called the Anchor Conversion Tool, something like that. Okay, so it looks like that in both versions. Click on this guy, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in, okay, and we'll look at this guy. And if I click on him once, he was a corner, oh sorry, he was a curve, and now he's a corner. And this guy here is a curve. Well, both of these are curves when they should be corners. Jeez, Dan. Okay, let's, uh, let's change something else. Let's say, let's click on him. Okay, now he's a corner, great. Let's see, I wanna make this guy a curve. And all I do is click, hold, and drag him. Okay, I might have to move it around a little bit. You can see now he is a curve. So there are, yeah, this tool does both. Click it once to get rid of the curve. And if it's a corner and it should be a curve, click and drag it out. Give that a practice. Now there's a few things that need tidying up. Grab my white arrow, there's this guy here. And you can see, well, you might not be able to see why, but um, I've got this anchor point here, right? There he is, okay, he's down here. And the handles come out quite far and they actually go past the point here. And that's trying to like force the line to go like, I'll show you kind of an exaggerated version. It's trying to go back towards itself. So often with these handles, they can't go past kind of like the next anchor point. Otherwise they start doing some weird stuff. So both of you guys can be dragged in closer to the home here, closer to the anchor point. Okay, you're gonna get it like this. And I should go through and fix the head, okay? Because <laughs> he's a little bit off. Now, if you are looking at things, you're like, man, why isn't it symmetrical? Because it looks just a little bit wonky. Often, if I click on this point here, um, to make a perfect circle, I'll show you what a perfect circle looks like. The ellipse tool, drag it out. It's made up of the same points. Go with the white arrow. If I click on one of them, you can start to see, right? I'm gonna select on them all. I'll actually, click on one of them. You can see, I click on this top one, that one's flat and these handles are exactly the same length. So, and these ones parallel, okay? So that's kind of what we're looking for. You can see here, if I click on this top point, this guy's flat, which is awesome, but these guys are kind of both heading off at an angle. So what I'm gonna do is first get them to line up roughly the same kind of points, so it's roughly kind of about there from each other, and I want them to be kind of like straight up and down. Um, watch this, when I'm dragging this guy around, if I hold shift, it does lock them into a, like a nice, um, Nice little thing there. Same with you. Straighten up, buddy. And okay, both of these top bits, I want to drag in a little bit and a little bit. And don't be afraid to move the anchor point as well. It's maybe just a bit high in that line. Better. Better. Not perfect, but better. Okay, so I would like you, your next mission, okay, is to draw dun, 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 the owl. Okay, so I want you to go through, uh, draw the owl. Okay, as complete shapes, and then see if you can use your amazing new illustrator skills and show me uh, a version of your owl. And I'd like to, if you've done the previous tutorial, just a kind of a side by side, just copy and paste them from one um, document to another. And I want you to see what you did with your curve tool and what you did with your pen tool. If they're both perfect, awesome. If one's better than the other, I'd like to kind of hear your feedback about which tool you like the most. Are you a precision pen tool person from, pen tool is like the one that's been around forever. The courage tool's new. And is it cheating? It's not cheating. You're still drawing, but it's helping you out a little bit. I wanna know which you found better. So get them side by side. Give me a screenshot. I'd love to see what you're doing. All right, that's it for this tutorial. I will see you in the next one. Hi there, in this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to use the pencil tool to do some kind of creative hand-drawn effects. We're also going to take the lines and make them dashed and dotted. We'll also do things like this with a kind of swooshy, add arrowheads, okay? Hopefully yours will look nicer than my ones. And we're gonna go and do that now in this tutorial. All right, let's jump in. All right, so let's get started. Let's go to File, let's go to New. We're gonna have a print document, it's gonna be letter, and it's going to be landscape. Okay, let's click create. Let's bring in an image, so file place. Okay, and the difference in this case is we did before, we're gonna use drawing one, and in previous tutorials, if you've watched them, we've clicked on template, and that kind of puts it on its own layer, it fades it out a little bit, and locks it so that it's easy to draw over the top of. We don't want the kind of fading part of it, so we can't use template, we're just gonna leave drawing one, we're gonna click place, Okay, and um, you can click and drag out and that'll give you like a specific size. Or if you click once, like I'm gonna do here, it's gonna kind of just put it in at its full size. So depending on your image, you might drag it out or just like I've done here, click once and it comes in full size. 
Um, also, just to make sure I've got view and make sure Smart Guides is turned back on. We turned it off in a previous tutorial. I'm gonna click, hold, and drag it so it kind of lines up. It's a little bit big for this page, and that's okay. So in your Layers panel, we're gonna manually kind of do that template part that we did in the previous video. So this one here, I'm gonna double click the word Layer 1, and this is gonna be Background. This is not essential, just it's just handy when we're doing this tutorial together. So I've named it, and um, this kind of mysterious icon here, this kind of empty space, click it, it locks the layer. Okay, so just meant to know that that's the place to click. And I'm gonna make a new layer. This is a little turned up page down the bottom here. I'm gonna click on that once. Okay, I've got layer two. And I'm just gonna double click layer two and call this one drawing. Okay, and I know I'm on this layer because it's blue. So the pencil tool is this guy here. Okay, uh, underneath our paintbrush tool, you might find you've got the shaper tool, okay, out by default. So click, hold it down and grab the pencil tool. Now the pencil tool by default is a little bit weird and a little bit hard to use, so we're gonna change that. So let's say I'm gonna draw a smiley face, I'm gonna draw around here. Now the weird thing about it is, watch this, if I keep drawing, can you see it doesn't draw new lines, it redraws over the existing ones and kind of disappears. It's, it's kind of a strange thing to happen, so we're gonna change that by default. So I'm gonna delete that, putting the delete key on my keyboard. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna go to my properties panel and I'm going to make sure that I've got no fill and I have a stroke of white. Okay, just to fit with what we've got in the background here. To change the pencil tool options, you just double click on it. So double click the pencil tool, and in here there's a things we wanna change, like keep selected, okay, we want turned off. Okay, and the other thing we wanna do is, here where it says fidelity, okay, um, it's gonna try and help you out, make your drawing look a little smoother and a little better. I love it right up, okay? Uh, especially if I'm drawing, say, with my mouse like I am here, or my touchpad. Wacom is a little different, okay? Even with a uh, Wacom tablet, okay, where you're drawing with a pen, uh, I like to crank it up. You may be not as high as this, but we'll go full max smooth. And now when we draw, look what happens. It just kind of makes everything fluid and nice. <laughs> That's probably not the nicest, okay? But let's grab our black arrow. I'm gonna delete them. What I'd like to do here is just some kind of free form. I'm gonna do flames out the bike for no good reason, but you can see when I draw and I let go, it's done a quite a nice job. And what I'm gonna do is actually do a one piece and watch when I let go, kind of smooths that out nice. So my flames are going to be terrible. What I'd like to do is instead of doing them in one go, I'd like to have two parts. It's just gonna help us when we do the next bit of example, um, when we have a little look um, at brushes. So I'm just gonna kind of draw these flames. Now I really wanna go grab my Wacom tablet here because this is looking pretty bad. These are meant to be flames, by the way. Looks like a pineapple's growing out the back. <laughs> it totally looks like a pineapple. Uh, that's okay. Um, what we're gonna do is look at some of the <laughs> techniques for stroke. So some of the first things you need to know about drawing lines like this is with the black arrow, let's select them all. And because we've got the background layer locked, okay, it doesn't select any of that stuff. So I've got them selected and over here under our properties panel, okay, the basics are stroke. We've got our stroke weight, which we've looked in at a, a earlier example. Okay, I'm gonna crank it up to say six points just so I can show you some of these other options for stroke. Now to open up all the advanced settings for stroke, you just click on the word stroke and it kind of opens them all up. If you want to go a different way, there's a way of opening up that panel forever by going to window and open up stroke. So if you're getting sick of having to open it and you've got a big enough computer, okay, you can just go to window and stroke and it's only giving you the tiny options, weird, I know. But if you double click the word stroke, double click it again, it's got like three modes. Uh, four modes, small version, stupid version, Massive version, I don't know why they've got these different versions, okay, but if you keep clicking on it, you'll find that's the like big, big version. I'm gonna use this option in here, okay, just so it collapses back in and ah, better use of my space. So I'm gonna click on it, and the first thing we're gonna look at is the capping. Okay, so this changes quite a bit of the look, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit of my pineapple flames. Okay, so I'm gonna click on stroke. By default, you're gonna have what's called a butt cap, okay, right there, butt cap. Unfortunately named, and it's just kind of just flat at the end. If I click this next one, rounded cap, can you see I'm gonna go on, off, on, off. Just kind of rounds off the ends, and that's really nice, especially when you get a low stroke, okay, a small stroke like this, and you just don't wanna have like uh, really pointy ends or butt caps, okay, just kind of curves it off a little bit nicely. I'm gonna go back up to six points. Let's have a little look at some of the other options. So butt cap is flat at the end. This one here I very rarely use, projecting cap, kind of goes 
out past the line ends here and it goes back past so let's go butt cap uh, projecting cap i think i just like saying butt cap okay projecting cap actually i'm going to leave it on butt cap okay and we've got these corners here so lots of these lines aren't corners they're just straight lines this one here's a corner and did i do any other ones i think just this one here look what happens when i change it from a corner of a mitered join to a round join okay can you see where it goes around this curve it's rounded on the edge okay so the joins are different and this last one here kind of bevels it off like an edge i never use that one either so either of those first two are quite good and um, i'm going to leave those as is and what might look good for our, our flaming pineapple now is down here right at the bottom something called profile profile is a nice way of just changing the line instead of being perfect all the way along look on this one here just kind of makes it tapered at both ends you can kind of see that gets projected onto our lines that's kind of why i wanted having uh, separate lines because you get this kind of like pointy ends on both sides whereas this one here it's pointy at the tippy tips okay but not it's quite thick through the middle here up to you Okay, but have a little play around with the rest of them. So I've got them selected, click on stroke, and down the bottom here in profile, I can go through and say, I want this one, which is kind of strange. Yeah, more pineapple -y. Okay, you can flip them, okay, depending on how you want them on the line. And yeah, let's have a little look at some of the other ones. I'll let you have a look, okay? Points, other ones, other ones. I'm going to probably go back. I like this one, I think, this uh, width profile five. I'm going to use him. Cool. Now there's a couple more things I want to show you about strokes, uh, drawing um, with strokes. And um, one of them is say arrows. Okay, so I'm just going to grab my uh, pencil tool again. Okay, and I'm going to draw something that looks like that. Uh, meant to be like the wheels turning. That's what it's meant to look like. Okay, mm, that's okay. Okay, <laughs> um, with it selected, I'm going to grab my black arrow. I'm going to click both of these by dragging a box around them. And what I'll do is go to stroke. And this one here, arrowheads, are quite important. Well, quite useful, okay? So with it selected, the two lines, you've got a beginning and an ending. And it really depends on which way you started drawing. Play with both. Okay, I'm going to go arrow here. It's kind of not the way I wanted it. So that's actually the end, not the beginning. I want it turning this way. Okay, so if you scroll down the arrowheads, eventually they turn into the kind of tail ends of the arrow. And this is going to look better for the beginning. Okay, and by better... <laughs> it's a pretty wonky error. I'm going for this hand-drawn look. Okay, so profile as well, I might go through and try and make it look nicer. Now, you can see I added that kind of profile the same as this one over here, but it just doesn't look the same if I click off. Okay, it's quite thin. It just means the stroke width isn't that high. So with them selected, I'm going to raise the stroke width. Now, what happens with arrowheads is that by default, they've got a weird proportion to the line. Okay, so uh, a four-point arrowhead is really big. So when I click on stroke, there is a percentage underneath both of these ends. And you can see if I scale this one down, it's going pretty slow. So I'm going to toil it down to maybe, say, 20% of the line and 20% of the line. Why? Because I that looks a bit weird, but I want to increase this kind of stroke width. Okay, and maybe flip it across. I don't know, I've made really ugly lines. But you're getting the sense of it, right? With uh, You can add arrowheads, easy peasy. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at dashed and dotted lines and we're going to try and make it look better like i promise you when i practiced this i had flames out the back and cool arrows <laughs> it's turned <laughs> not so good in actual practice all right and um, so what we're going to do is you know, like do a little dotted line around here so it looks like it's cut at it not dotted line a dashed line so it looks like she could be cut out so pencil tool again i'm going to just draw a really rough kind of line around the outside line around the outside now stopped at the edge of the desk and we're going around okay back to the beginning the cool thing about going back to the beginning watch this um, remember that a little icon with a circle see that changes there it kind of shows you it's going to kind of complete it cool so uh, not hard if i select on the line and i click on stroke there is a dashed line click on it magically dashed if i click off okay dashed line there's a couple of things you might want to do with a dashed line so i've got it selected i'm going to increase it so i can show you and back under stroke things like the rounded cap can you see the difference between those two depending on what you want to do the other thing is is that the dash line here if you leave it's just going to do 12 and 12 so 12 points and then a gap of 12 points you can increase this okay so maybe 22 okay and it's just going to do 22 points and 22 points um you could have a smaller gap say i want 10 so it's going to have smaller gaps and larger um, kind of dots or dashes. Okay, you can do the opposite. So the dash can be quite small, so maybe two point, and the gap's going to be quite big. Okay, depending on what you want to do. I 
feel like that's kind of like a zipper detail or Frankenstein stitches, one or the other. Um, let's go back up. I'm going to do 12 and 12. Now you don't have to, if you want them to be ex, uh, identical, you can just leave 12 and it will kind of guess that then what you mean by the gap is 12. Let's look at dotted lines. Weirdly, there should just be an option that says dotted as well, but it doesn't and they're really hard. And even when I'm making them, I'm like, how the how the hang do you make a dotted line again? Okay, it's a, it's a funny old thing. So let's grab the pencil tool and I'm going to draw like tassels from this. Okay, um, I'm gonna grab my black arrow, select both of these and get rid of the dashes. So click on stroke, you might not have yours. Okay, so let's turn it off, so straight line. Um, I'm gonna have my weight at about four point. Now, weird thing is, is dotted is actually part of dashed, okay, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but if you make the dash zero and you make the gap anything, so 12, it makes kind of dots. Actually, they're just lines. Okay, so with them selected in here, all I need to do is change it from that default, which is a butt cap, to a round cap. And that might makes our little dotted lines. Okay, so you just need to make sure one of them, oh, the dash is zero, so it's actually got no length. Okay, but there's a rounder cap around it, so it kind of wants to wrap itself around that nothingness. Dotted lines, they're kind of weird. Okay, so turn on the dash line, make sure the dash is zero, and you can have the gap any size you like. Okay, 20 will just space them out. You can have them really kind of close together. They can even kind of like overlap like that. Mm, I'm gonna go for 10, nice. All right, zoom out, let's have a look at our, our magical drawing. Uh, we've learned of things about strokes. We haven't made anything very pretty though. But what we'll do in the next tutorial is we'll add brush strokes and things will get marginally prettier. So let's go and do that now in the next tutorial. Hi there, in this tutorial we're gonna look at brushes where we take kind of ordinary lines like this and give them lovely cool artistic brush strokes. They look hand drawn, we're gonna add wings, we're gonna add a crown, we're gonna make a star. Okay, we're gonna fill the star. All sorts of awesomeness in Adobe Illustrator. Let's go and do that now. Okay, so it's time to use brushes and yes, in between videos, if you're following along, I went back and made my flames a whole lot cooler and my arrows a lot nicer just by redrawing them with the pencil tool. Okay, um, I couldn't help myself. So what we're gonna do is brushes. First of all, we need something to add the brushes to. Okay, so we're gonna grab the pencil tool and let's add kind of like wings to her. So I'm gonna do that in lots of little bits. Now, the reason I don't do them all in one big go, you could, um, let's do one with one big go. Okay, so one really good wing. But remember, smoothing's on, so when I let go, it looks marginally better. I'm gonna add more wings on this side, but I'm gonna do them as separate pieces, okay? And I'm just gonna show you the difference, really. I'm gonna draw some circles. Um, you can see that one there completed uh, the circle, which is kind of cool. We'll just see how it works, okay? We'll draw some little more half circles in here. Um, great, so with my black arrow, I'm gonna select all of these guys. It's a little bit harder now because we've got things all over the place, so you might have to click one, hold shift, Okay, and keep clicking until you got them all, but I can kind of drag a box around all of these guys. Great. First thing I'm gonna do is stroke is gonna be white, and I'm gonna open up my brushes panel. Now, before we open up brushes, it's nice, uh, especially with the brushes, if you use a smaller size to get started with. It doesn't matter, you can do it afterwards, but let's get down to 0.25, a okay, really thin line. Now, your brushes, there's lots built into Illustrator. Okay, the basics are in here, but there are actually lots that you can go and find online. Often they're free. Okay, so window, let's go to brush libraries. And in here, probably the most exciting ones are ones under vector packs, these two ones here. We'll look at these two plus one other. Okay, grunge brush vector packs we're gonna do. I'm gonna move it off to the side here. I'm gonna drag the bottom of it so I can see the different options and click on the first one. Okay, and by default it's gone back to one point, so don't listen to me. Okay, you can change it afterwards. Go back to something a little bit smaller. Now, you can see that's the smallest option for the drop down, and it's kind of cool, it kind of looks quite artistic, right? But it's still maybe quite thick, so you can actually just type in here. So uh, 0.25 is kind of a hairline, which is quite small, but I can go to zero, uh, 0 0.05, hit return. Okay, and again, quite small, and click off. So yeah, cool. So the difference really is, uh, may, now we're just looking for things that we like the look of, right? So I'm just going to draw a box around these guys and shift click these two to get rid of, what's, I don't even know what that is. 
that was a smiley face I drew earlier. So uh, I'm gonna shift click all of these, I've got them selected. I'm gonna go to a white stroke. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about the size yet. I'm gonna pick one of these other ones. And you can see, um, let's have a look at one of these ones. Okay, there's a couple of things that we need to be aware of is that because this is such a long line, it's trying to smear itself down quite a long part. Now, some of the problem is the size. So I'm gonna turn it down to um, 0 0.05 like the other one. Okay, and it's looking better, but it finds it hard to what to do at these corners, okay, because it's, it's kind of like a really detailed vector brush and kind of has to go in and out and kind of does some weird things. So ways to get around that, if you've got a really long stroke and it's doing strange things at the edges, I'm gonna go up to maybe not one point, but back to 0.25, just to show an example. As we did this earlier, remember under stroke, okay, we've got these butt caps and the corner options. So let's go to round join and it will try and kind of get around the corner and the ends of it as well, which does absolutely nothing on this brush. It does on different brushes, okay? But this is kind of one of the things you can do. You can see the mitre join here is just trying too much to get around this corner, but when I get to this rounded join, it looks marginally better, okay? So you might have to play around with this depending on the brush you pick. So what I like to do when I'm using the brush tool is use these kind of like shorter strokes because they tend to have a better result. Selected, let's have a look at these guys. Pick one, Dan, pick one. All right, that'll do. Cool, so I've got my kind of drawing exercises, those guys done. Let's draw one more and look at some of the other brushes and it'll kind of give you an idea of how to go off and find your own. Um, so I'm gonna grab my pencil tool again. I'm going to draw, she's gonna be a princess. Remember, I'm gonna draw them in separate strokes. Um, you can't really see them, so I'm going to undo them. So before I start drawing, I'm going to have stroke, but I'm going to crank it up to, say, one point so you can see what I'm drawing. So, yep. She is not a princess. She's more like, I don't know, some sort of, oh, maybe that's what it needs. Totally what it needed. Now she's a queen. Okay, um, let's grab the black arrow. I'm gonna select all of these guys. I'm gonna show you another one. So another cool one is under brush libraries, vector packs, and this hand-drawn brushes. I'll let you explore those ones. Um, some of the other ones, lots of these are really, uh, lame's a strong word, but lots of them are lame. Um, Artistic has some really good ones though. So if we go to maybe chalk charcoal pencil or ink, um, these go quite cool, click on ink. I wanna show you ink because these have some, instead of just solid black, they have some kind of like textures to them. Can you see it's kind of, uh, they're a little bit transparent. Now again, I'm gonna to have to turn the stroke down to something a little bit more useful, but where they start overlapping, they start adding kind of extra depth. And um, yep, the reason I wanna show you this one is you'll run into brushes that have this line along the top here and you'll be like, oh, awesome. They do weird stuff, okay? They, these meant to be used as just kind of like one off. So I'm gonna undo and I'm gonna pick, say this one here and then I'm gonna click off. These guys here, if I drag them off, okay, uh, means that I can, for some reason, if I drag it across this image here, they're kind of disappearing behind it, which is kind of weird. So I'm gonna drag it up the top here, and they're just meant to be used as elements up the top, okay, just as like separate things by themselves rather than following a path, okay? And what you can do, like with this guy here selected, he's lots of different options. I can right click them and go to ungroup, okay? And you can keep ungrouping them, Okay, until you get kind of the individual parts. It takes a little while. Okay, the shortcut might be handy. Okay, we're almost there. Right click one more time, shortcut ungroup. Okay, and we start getting individual elements. I can select you guys and make you white. Awesome. And um, so yeah, that's how they're meant to be used, just as like single little options. Okay, and um, let's look at the next part. Let's close down the ink brushes. And let's look at kind of like filling in brush strokes. So let's say we're gonna draw a star. I'm gonna grab the pencil tool and I'm gonna to draw, uh, what's this? If I let go, you're like, where did that line go? Okay, it's because I'm drawing with a pencil tool with a fill, but no stroke. So the line is considered a stroke and there is no stroke. There's a fill, but it doesn't need a fill, okay? It's there, if I go my black arrow, you can kind of wave your mouse around and go, that's random line, get rid of him. And there was this circle here we found earlier on. I don't know where he's from. So I'm gonna grab my pencil tool and just make sure you're quite purposeful uh, when you're drawing pencil tool, pick a stroke color, doesn't need a fill, and I'm gonna draw a kind of a starry thing. 
my drawing tools helping me out. Okay, so with this selected, black arrow, select all of these guys, I'm gonna pick a brush. Um, I told you I wasn't gonna show you any other ones, but uh, I'm going to look at one more brush libraries. I'll use hand-drawn brush vector. Um, so I'm gonna grab him, way too strong. Let's get down to a smaller, yeah, we're getting there, maybe 1.5. Cool, so I've got this shape here, right? And I wanna fill it in. Now, um, the trick is, I'm gonna close these down, is I'm gonna copy and paste it so I've got a second option. I'm gonna keep the strokes there, but this guy here, these lines, okay, what I wanna make sure is I wanna kinda of fill in the gaps. And what I should have done before I started drawing is I should have made sure they overlap perfectly. So we'll check that out. And um, over here, I wanna turn it back to a regular line. So over here where it says brush, I'm gonna say actually no brush, go up to the top here and pick this first one. Okay, just a nice thin brush. And they do overlap, so if you didn't do this, you're gonna to have to make sure that lines overlap at least a little bit. So with them all selected, we're gonna to go to our best friend, the Shape Builder tool. We're gonna to pick some colors for it. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna pick a color. I'm gonna use the color mixer. And if yours is like mine and it's defaulted to uh, just black and white, which might happen quite often. Okay, with this selected, I'm gonna to go to this option here Okay, and pick RGB, which can't be done. So I'm gonna pick black first, then go in here and pick RGB. Cool, so I can pick from any of these colors in here, and when I hover over, I'm gonna say that's gonna be filled with the green. Okay, I can fill in all of these guys. Now they fill in because they overlap. If they didn't overlap, they might not fill up. And um, I'm gonna pick another color, mm, yeah. And um, the reason I do this is I'm gonna select all of these guys now and I'm gonna get rid of the stroke. Goodbye stroke by going U and going to no fill. These guys down here, left over. Don't need you guys. And I'm going to select this and put it back over the top. Okay, line it up. Cool, so it's just a nice way of kind of, I guess, adding fills to kind of hand-drawn rough stuff. Okay, Shape Builder tool is perfect for that. Just making sure that the rough lines all overlap. Now, one thing you might um, see or have noticed is that if I grab, uh, like say I've got a line and they don't quite meet up. Okay, so I'm saying I'm drawing some stuff. Uh, here we go. So I'm drawing a square, but the gap is, <laughs> I'm drawing with a brush. Great, Dan. Now select all of these, turn it back just to a regular brush. Maybe this first guy here. Cool, so you can see there's a big gap here. Okay, mine was probably too big, but you can also see, if I zoom in, there's actually a little gap in between here. Okay, so what that means is that um, it shouldn't fill, but there is a little bit of freedom that the Shape Builder tool has. That's probably too big, but it's gonna fill in these automatically. You can kind of adjust that to say, like, come on, just give me a little bit more gap uh, joining ability, and you do it by double clicking on the tool. Double click on it. Okay, and up here, there's the gap depth. Okay, so you can go in here and go from small, okay, through to large, um, uh, custom, you can make it huge. Okay, um, so I think by default, is it small? I can't remember. Okay, but double click the tool to change it, and it just gives you a few different options. Like this one here is not gonna work because it's way too big. If I go in here and I say, go to large, is it still not gonna work? It's not gonna work too far apart. Okay, but you get the idea. All right, I'm gonna delete those, zoom out, Marvel at my awesomeness, <laughs> okay? But you're getting the idea, right? We're doing hand-drawn stuff and then adding brushes to add a little bit more realism to what something is actually vector and scalable and beautiful, but can look quite custom as well. Okay, so now it's project time. Okay, so I've got an image that I want you to draw on. Okay, it's under, I'll show you it here in the exercise files. There it has appeared. Okay, and what I'd like you to do is I'm gonna set you a task. I want five separate doodles. Okay, can all use the same stroke and kind of brush style, but I want five things, okay? And if you're looking, if you're like, what am I gonna draw? Come up with a theme, okay? This could be, you could use a holidays theme. So there could be holiday stuff like sun and beach things, okay? Or you might go finance, okay? It might be dollar signs and 
graphs and stuff just to give you an idea I guess to what to doodle and draw on this and what I want you to do is experiment both with the obviously the drawing tool but look at the brushes as well and um, maybe you look at dotted or dashed okay it's up to you but I'd love to you to go off have at least five and at the end I'd love as a project okay to take a screenshot or save it as a JPEG and send it to me as a project um, or in the comments all right uh, I will see you in the very next video Hi there, in this tutorial we're going to start with some basic lines like this and then do this to the with the width tool. Okay, it's going to take our simple lines, add a bit of dimension to them and a little bit of sexiness. All right, that is the width tool. Let's learn how to do that now in Adobe Illustrator. All right, to get started, let's go to file and go to open and in your exercise files. Okay, there is a file called width tool. Okay, and click open. All right, we're going to start with the kind of like leaves at the top here. I want you to kind of complete. Uh, I want another leaf down the bottom here, just show you how I drew it. Okay, so pencil tool. I'm going to have a fill of none, a little stripey line, and I'm going to have a stroke of uh, white, and I'm going to have the stroke width down to a hairline, which is 0.25. And I'm double clicking on my pencil tool to make sure the smoothing is way up, and I've turned off keep selected. Okay, click OK. So what I want to do now is just kind of click and drag and you can see that because of the curving is quite up high, it's making me look a whole lot better than I am. Cool. All right, so we've got a bottom leaf now. And um, what I want to do is do what we did at the intro there and have all those lovely lines. Okay, and the trick with it is to get started with the black arrow and um, it's best to select all the lines and make sure it's really thin. Okay, so the stroke weight needs to be at either 0.25 or less. Okay, uh, yeah, that what's it needs to be quite thin to get started. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, deselect in the background and we're going to grab the width tool. It's this guy there. Looks like a kind of a bow and arrow. Click on it. Okay, and this magic tool, okay, if I zoom in a little bit, okay, it means I can grab any point on this line, okay, and click, hold, and drag. If it doesn't and it kind of just goes nowhere, you're dragging the wrong way. Give it a wiggle. Okay, and you can see here, beautiful. If you've ever tried to do that before with a pen tool, okay, you try and draw one line and then the other side. I love the width tool, so cool, huh? Select on this line, I didn't even select on it, just grab my width tool and just start pulling them out wherever you feel like you should. Okay, I'm just gonna work my way around this one. It's amazing you can transform something quite simple. Okay, got this moving on to make it look a little nicer, but yeah, just kind of giving it some fullness. There we go. Now you can do more than one uh, point on a line, and I'll show you how to do that in this next part. Okay, I'm happy with it. Yeah, I'm happy enough with it. Okay, uh, I imagined it better. But anyway, down here, okay, I've got a um, path that I've drawn, and what we're going to do is with the width tool, we're going to end up with multiple kind of widths on it. So I'm going to start with one about here. Okay, and you can see it's kind of working its way all the way around, okay, from thickest here all the way to thin at the two ends. Now, that's fine, okay, if that's the look you're looking for. But what I'd like to do is I want it to get kind of skinnier along the top here. So watch this, I can click out another line, okay, I click the wrong way, click and drag up. Okay, I can make it thicker up here, which is cool, but actually I just want to make it thinner. So I'm just dragging this little point to make it quite thin. And then I've got this kind of like bulge there, thins there, and then maybe across the middle here, I'm going to drag out a nice thick one. You can start to get these kind of like cool interplays of thick and thin. Okay, maybe down here I want it to be nice and thin, but over here I want it to give a nice little kind of like whippy tail thing there. You get what I mean, right? So I'm going to drag this nice and big. Um, but potentially I want it to get a lot smaller through here and then get nice and big again at the end here. Cool. Another thing you can do is you can slide these. So say that they're in the wrong point, this guy here, you can click on them and just drag them around. You can see you can kind of wiggle his way all the way around. You can't go past that guy um, that I've already got there, but you can drag these along with another one. Um, you can kind of, you can see it's kind of moving and adjusting. You can also uh, hold down the shift key Okay, and drag one side, not the shift key, hold down the option key, okay, and you can drag one side at a time. So it's option on a Mac or alt on a PC, okay, and just grab any of these either side, doesn't really matter, okay, you can just do one side rather than both. Cool. Now we've used the uh, pencil tool quite a bit now to get our um, curves. We're going to go back to the curvature tool. 
because I guess this is a font and I guess I want a little bit more preciseness to it, okay, rather than really hand-drawn stuff. So I'm gonna grab the curvature tool and before I start drawing, I'm just gonna make sure I've got no fill and I've got a stroke. And in terms of the stroke width, I'm gonna pick just one point for the moment, okay? And it can be hard to know um, with the curvature tool, how many points you need. It's a little bit of trial and error, right? So if I click once and twice, I get a straight line. And it's obviously not gonna be enough. Okay, so if I click once and maybe a third, okay, so just three of them, you can see it's just got a bend in the middle. It's not what I want. So what I do want is there's two curves. There's one going this way and one going that way. So I want one there, okay, at the tippy top, kind of one halfway through at the apex of this curve. It's a very slight one, so I'm gonna click once. And then one kind of at the apex of this one, and then it's gonna come out here, click once. Now I get a kind of a nicer line. Now it wants to continue on. I can grab the black arrow, just click off in the background. Now, uh, if I grab my width tool now, select on this width tool, it's gonna to work to a degree, okay? Well, it's gonna work nicely, but what you'll see here is, if I zoom in on the end here, you can see I get this kind of like stubby end to it, okay? It's because I didn't change my stroke width before I started drawing, so I'm gonna zoom out. Okay, so with this, I'm gonna undo actually. Um, so before I use my width tool, I'm gonna just make sure the stroke is quite thin. You can't have zero, but you can have like 0 0.05, something super thin. And, okay, I'm using black as well as my fill. Now if I grab my width tool, okay, and I, I don't know how many points I need. I might need two. I want one there to kind of get the top bit, and maybe one more for a fuller middle. That's not what I want. <laughs> I'm just gonna do one in the middle. Come on, Dan. If it's not quite right, I'm gonna drag it down. Yeah. Okay, remember this is drawing is it's not meant to be perfect. Okay, it was just kind of a hand drawn get it going one. So the other thing I might do is that um there's this like little white whip in the middle there. Okay, so it's a little bit hard when there's something already there. Okay, so if I grab my say curvature tool now, it wants to join up and wants to do things. So black arrow, I'm just gonna click and grab the center and just kind of move it off. And we'll get back, we'll move them back in a second. Now, curvature tool or pencil tool, I probably want the pencil tool for this one, or pencil tool, I just want to kind of like a curve out of here. Yeah, we'll see how that works. Okay, and I'm gonna make it a stroke color of white. Okay, and now I'll move this back in. And because I drew it after this black line, it should be on top. Cool, so I'm gonna kind of move it into position. Using my arrow keys just to kind of tap it down, something like that. Might rotate it around a little bit. Now I'm messing about. Okay, you got the idea of what we're doing here. Um, I'm going to turn the stroke down to 0 0.05. Okay, and I'm going to grab my width tool. And I'm going to drag this out. It's a little bit hard because there's, there's lots of things fighting for the width tool attention. So I might go something like that, drag it down a little bit. How do I like it? Yeah. I like it enough. Okay, so what I want you to do is, uh, your task is to go through and finish this. Okay, so I'd like you to go through and do this part. Okay, well, one thing when you are drawing this part down the bottom here, let me have a quick little look with the curvature tool, is that if I draw one, draw one, draw one, and come back here, it really wants to join up to that existing one. So you've got to make sure when you're coming to this end point, is just to stay away, okay? And you can fix that up afterwards, move with a white arrow. Okay, and you can drag it in afterwards. It won't kind of join up after it's been drawn. Okay, and start with that. Okay, all of these lines here, the one little hint, I've practiced this already. Okay, I've taught this a few times. So let's go and change it back to black. The one thing that can catch people out is this uh, O, and I only learned it through practice as well. Okay, how many points does it need? It looks like it needs about four. Okay, turns out it works out nicely. Click once, click twice click again, click again, you get this kind of like boxy circle and it's kind of close to what we want. That was a bit quick, but yeah, with the width tool, you can yeah move these and adjust them and yeah, see if you can give it a go, give the uh, V a go, the E a go, then do all these like little extra bits and yeah, go through, color it. I'd love to see how you get it. Like I've never actually gone through and completed it fully myself. I'd love to see what other people do with it. I know it's not the best font, but I'd love to see, yeah, your interpretation. You can totally adjust it and make it as you want, but I'd like to see it as a project. Yeah, so screenshot it and send it to me. That'd be awesome. All right, that is it for the width tool. It's pretty cool, huh? Makes drawing those kind of sexy lines super easy. I love it. Thank you, Illustrator. All right, on to the next video.
Hi there, in this video we're going to make this simple postcard, we're going to look at fonts that are installed on your machine, okay, and we're going to look at something called Typekit, which is fonts that Adobe give you and we can download them for free and use them as part of our designs. Alright, let's go and learn how to do that now in Illustrator. Okay, so let's make our postcard for our text to go on, we're going to File New, and we want a postcard size, now um, there is under Print, um, you can see view all presets and there's no postcard size in here. Under art and illustration, there is a preset for postcard, okay? But if I click on it and switch it over here to say inches or millimeters, it's it's got a really weird uh, ratio, okay? Not what I consider a traditional postcard. Maybe that's where in the world <laughs> uh, depends on what's traditional. I'm gonna just put in uh, 5.8 and 4.1. That's a kind of a really kind of standardized postcard size. If it's in millimeters, very similar. Um, it's 148 by 105. Okay, I'm gonna go back to inches. Awesome, everything, I'm gonna make sure it is landscape and let's click create. All right, let's put in our background color. So just grab the rectangle tool, pick a fill color. Um, I'm gonna to go to my color mixer and up the top here, I'm just gonna make sure I'm on RGB. Okay, you might be on CMYK RGB. Let's go on RGB for the moment. We're gonna look at color a little bit later on. Just kind of click through here and decide on a color. I'm gonna pick a bluish greeny color. Okay, I'm gonna drag it across the whole thing. There you go. Awesome, I want no stroke. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and go no stroke please. Don't worry too much about the color because um, we are gonna go and change it in a future tutorial. <laughs> I say that and I'm like, it's too blue. Okay, a little bit more green. All right, um, I also want a rectangle on this side. I wanna break it into three groups, two, two columns for the text and one on the left here for just, I'm gonna put an image in later on. Okay, you would have seen that at the beginning there. So what I wanna do is break it into three. The easiest way is to copy and paste this. So I've got two of them. Okay, I'm gonna change this to a dark gray. I'm gonna go back to my swatches and pick just the dark gray for the moment. Um, this is gonna get switched out again. So divide it by three, maybe we can do the math in these, so the width, I'm gonna break the link so that the height and width aren't joined. And I'm gonna say I'd like the width just in here and put a divide by, which is a forward slash. And I wanna divide it by three there. Hit return, okay, and it's just divided it to three. Cool, so I'm gonna use two of these for my text and this is gonna be my image. What I'd like to do for the moment though is to lock the background. Okay, so layers, I'm gonna call this layer background all caps for no good reason. I'm gonna hit the little locking icon, new layer, and this is going to be my type. All caps for no reason. Okay, so when you're adding type, uh, there's two kind of types of type boxes. Grab the type tool, which is this capital T. If you click once, you've created what's called a point type box. Don't worry about the names. Basically, the point type box is uh, a box that uh, just keeps on going, keeps on going forever and goes off the screen. Uh, good for titles and logos and stuff, but when we want body copy, we need a different kind of type box. So grab the type tool again, and down here, kind of this lower part, we're gonna add some body copy. If I click, hold, and drag, okay, so up here I just clicked once, and I got a point type box, okay, whereas I click, hold, and drag down here, you can see you get a box that has, it's called an uh, area type box, kind of, basically all it does, it has a kind of an end to it, and it snaps back around, okay, and watch this, if I resize it now, it kind of, you know, expands and contracts, whereas this one here, if I try and expand and contract it, kind of a weird sort of function using a point type box. Um, there's gonna be times where you need to convert the two. So I'm gonna delete that one. Is that, say I draw, a, I click once for a title in here, and I, uh, I add some stuff, add some stuff. And what happens, let's say later on, I wanna make this a lot bigger. So I'm gonna to go to my properties, and I'm gonna make the font size a lot bigger. I want to break onto two lines, right? So what you can do is you can change this by, with my black arrow, see this little kind of circle on the side here? That's the kind of conversion tool. If you double click it, it changes it into a uh, area type box like the bottom one here. Nothing really looks like it changes, except now when I drag the edge, can you see it snaps down into two lines? Or I could snap it down to three lines if there's enough room. Okay, so that's what I want this box to be. I want it to be nice and biggish. And we're gonna add some actual type and look at fonts next. So. Up the top here, um, there's a bit of text we're gonna put in. Uh, we're gonna say how to murder a designer. And we'll go, that's gonna be our tip number one. Okay, and how to murder a designer is asking them to send, can you send it over as a Word doc? I hate when that happens. 
Um, so there's that. This is just going to leave us body copy um, as Lauren Ipsum in the moment. Let's say we don't have that yet. Lauren Ipsum is just placeholder text. It's Latin. They're actual words that are just mixed up, so they make no sense. But um, yeah, good as a placeholder until you get your text. So let's move him down. What we will do is we'll start on this one at the top here and look at fonts. First of all, I'm going to change my fill to white. Okay, next thing I want to do is pick a font. So I'm going to drop this down. And you know how to pick fonts, it's no big deal. So I'll add a little bit of extraness to it. And what I really like is these filters. So these are all the fonts that are on my computer. Okay, so um, they've been installed in some previous life. Okay, so up here it says filter. This can be really handy because I'm looking for a serif font, which has those, basically a serif font has the little feet. They kind of look like Times New Roman. Okay, it has the little serifs uh, on the edges here. Let's zoom in just so I can give you a bit of font nerdery. Go back to our font. Let's pick times just because if I zoom in. So uh, a serif font has these little feet. Okay, these are called serifs. So this is a serif font. A sans serif font is this one here. Sans is without. So sans serif is without feet. This one has, a, okay, this one has no feet. So serif font. Um, let's look at a font. I've gone, I've gone through and had a little look about what I want to use already. And what you can do at the top here is once you've picked serif, you'll notice you, all your fonts are cut down to only serif fonts. Super handy, okay? Um, now the only trouble is next time you come back in, it's going to have the same filtering on. So you've got to remember to probably turn it off after you've used it. Go back to all classes of fonts. Serif font, and you just kind of scroll through and you can see my text updating on the side there. So it's best to have your text already drawn like we have, so you can go through and just check it. Um, I'm going to use, I can't remember where's my notes here, Gaudi old style, I'm gonna use the italic. Okay, that's the one I decided I wanna use. In terms of the font size, I'm probably gonna use 12 point. Okay, just so you know in terms of font sizes, say the body copy down here, body copy, our small body copy or the if you open up pretty much any magazine in the shop, it's gonna be 10 point. Okay, that's like super common font size. It's legible, it's readable, it looks kind of big, but this is a small postcard. Okay, where um, the smallest you wanna go is about eight point. Okay, that's kind of more business card size where you're just trying to squeeze lots of stuff in. Cool, so we're gonna have 10 points so people can read it. So that's that font. I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna use the same font. So Gaudi, you might not have this font. You can go and pick your own. I'm gonna make sure it's white. And um, I'm going to move this down. I'm probably going to play with that a little bit at the end. This font here, we're going to look at something called Type Kit. Okay, so um, Gaudi is just something that happens to be on my uh, machine already, right? But what Adobe do as part of your Creative Cloud license, okay, is you get access to Type Kit. And basically, what it means is I can, with any sort of font selected, I can drop down my character panel and go to this one that says Add Fonts from Type Kit. Click on him. Okay, and uh, it's going to open up a website. I've already opened it up here, and it'll ask you to log in, okay? Because you'll need a paid um, Creative Cloud license. If you don't have one of this, it's not going to work. Um, but basically, what we want to do is we want to go to Browse, which is this first option here, and it's just fonts, okay? Now there's lots of places you can go for free fonts, like Duff Font or Thousand and One Free Fonts. Those are those are fine, but what you'll find is that they're I don't know. Mm, if I need a font shaped like a cactus, I'll go to a, a thousand and one free fonts or just kind of like really fun, but I guess free. And they don't have a lot of um, the stuff I need for maybe more professional work, uh, glyphs and ligatures. And like I live in Ireland, I'm from New Zealand, both the Maori and Irish languages have all the fodders and all the ac accented letters. Okay, so I need a more mature font. Something like Typekit is perfect for it. They're cool fonts and they're free. So what you can do at the top here is you can type in, um, let's say, can I, can you, I like doing this because before you download it, you can kind of see what it's going to look like, okay? Um, sometimes it's paying, you kind of download one and then it doesn't look the same in the fonts you need to use it for. Okay, so in here, you can also kind of wrangle the fonts into some, say you only want to look at kind of script fonts or say hand-drawn fonts. Okay, so you can go through and just kind of work out which ones you want. Um, also, I like is, say I'm looking for headings, so I want kind of a, you know, more of a bold handwriting font. So I'm gonna turn that off. So I want heading fonts, uh, I'm gonna turn that off. Another nice thing is in this case, I want a quite a, a narrow width, okay, because I wanna fit a lot of text across the page. 
Um, yeah, there's a few, a bunch of other options that you can have a little look through here. Now the one I want, I've already had a little look through, so I'm gonna kind of cheat and I'm gonna go to League. And um, where are you, L-E-A? There you are, League Gothic. That's the one I've decided I want to use already. Okay, so this is the font, okay. Um, now there's a few different weights, okay. I'm just gonna say sync all. And basically what that's gonna do is, it, hopefully you can see it up at the top right here, you'll see in a second that it's downloading onto my computer and magically four fonts are added. It's that simple. I also notice that <laughs> I somehow I'm allowed 100, but I've got 323. I just don't ask questions. Somehow I keep getting more fonts. So let's jump back into uh, Illustrator. Now the cool thing about it is that it should already be installed. So if I go to League, if I can spell League, now what I might have to do is I'm gonna to have to turn the filtering of serif font because this is a sans serif font. There it is there, installed and ready to go. It's that simple. There are professional fonts. There's, a, there's you know, some really nice ones in there. And I'm gonna use League Gothic, just this one here. Cool, I'm gonna switch it to white. Uh, now you can switch over to the next uh, video because now I'm just gonna play around with fonts and font sizes. I'll give you some tricks. Let's do that before we go. I'm gonna select all my type. Okay, and I'm gonna use command, shift, and full stop, or period, depending on what you call it. Now, if you're on a PC, it's control, shift, um, and full stop, or period. Okay, so it just kind of increases the font size. I want them up to uh, three lines. Okay, so I'm getting it quite big. Um, in terms of the letting, I'm gonna select it all. You can use the letting over here. If you hover above it, it should tell you. It's line spacing, it's another word for it. I can decrease it. Okay, but a shortcut is if you hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC and use up and down arrows. I find that's just a nice quick way of doing it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So you are 10 point, you are at 10 point. I feel like there needs to be something different about the bottom here. I'm gonna go you there, lining them up. Now I'm just messing about. Um, if you find that, say I want an extra line in here, Okay, you just want to fill with placeholder text because it did it automatically for me, but say you have you just need more. With the box selected, go to type and go to fill with placeholder text. Just kind of fills it up. It doesn't really matter if you cut it off. Say I just want an extra line, there you go. I'm gonna put it in a full stop there so it looks like end of a paragraph. Come on, full stop. Awesome, <laughs> actually I changed my mind. Let's go back to you and I'm gonna lower it down a little bit. And I'm gonna grab the line tool, I'm gonna to draw a line either side, just to kind of section this off. Actually, I want it to be the same length. Now, mine had no stroke, no, uh, no stroke, no fill, so if I click off, it looks like it's gone. Basically, it won't print, because there's no stroke on it. I'm gonna go white, please. One point, probably half a point. Just so you know, when you are printing stuff, um, like if this is going out digitally, it doesn't matter how thin it is, but if it's going out physically, I've printed stuff with lines that are really small. So the lowest you should go is this one here, 0.25. I kind of made one that was like 0.18 or something like that. And literally it rubbed off, like you put your hand on the page and it was so thin that it couldn't hold onto the paper and it just kind of rubbed off on people's hands. So that was a big printing disaster. All right, so don't go too thin on lines. I'm just kind of using my keyboard now to tap this around. Oh man, how does this look? What do you think people? Needs a full stop down here. All right, so that is it for type and fonts. There is other things in here that I'm not gonna cover like uh, there's space between letters uh, over here, the space between letters. There is left align, right align. I'll, I'll assume that you'll be able to work those out yourself. But yeah, let's get in and start doing uh, some type on a path. We'll do that in the next video. So hide it up, see you in the next video. Hi, uh, what did you think of the video? If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Also leave me a comment, uh, let me know what you liked about it. Um, also, this is kind of a short part of a longer course, okay? If you wanna check that out, it's at bringyourownlaptop.com. This is the essentials course, okay? There is also another course, there is an advanced course, Okay, for Illustrator, and also a UI web uh, app design uh, version of Illustrator course as well. Check all those out. Um, also, it's quite a visual course. I'd love to see what you've actually made. Uh, on Instagram, I'm bring your own laptop. Okay, check that out. Also, remember there's a cheat sheet you can download. 
bring your own laptop. It's free under resources. Check all that out. And yeah, I'll see you in another video. Bye now.